Um, except for the guests, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, Matthew, hello. And can you all introduce yourselves? So we, um, and we'll go over the board will introduce itself and so I'll start. My name is Chris McVay. My name is Woden Teachout. I'm Allison Cornwall. Caroline May. Brian Taliaferro. Jan Miller Arsenault. Amy Toth. I'm Rachel Hernandez. I'm Malaria Lanther. Jessica Cobb. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, and welcome. Do we have um, any agenda revisions? I just have a question about board goals. Um, is this a bud evening when we're going to kind of compile those? Is that our thought? Um, I think that's time to Got it. Okay. Um, any other? Any public comments? And yeah, can you identify yourself? Caitlin Morgan, Kindergarten yeah. Teacher. Hey, Caitlin, how are you? Nice, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we have, um, uh, I have minutes for 5-1 with me. I'm going to pass them all. I must say, Allison's, uh, oh, God, I'm sorry. I had to do a lot of revision. Just, oh, really? Well, just because they, they were verbatim. You know, I mean, you did a great job taking verbatim. <laughs> if anyone wants to know, but, so there's some revisions there. I, I got exhausted um, after a while. I wasn't sure what was supposed to happen with it. showed up. My hands are exhausted. I can't get it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It, just, it was, it was um, So I, I would call this decision just to make now that we hold off for 15 minutes from day one until our next meeting. Thanks. Um, but I would entertain a motion for um, approving the um, minutes uh, from, I'm sorry, from April 12th. Moved. I have a question. Sure. Wait, we yeah, second, yeah. then discussion. Okay. I'll second. Why does it say um, go into exec executive session to discuss a personal matter? I read this multiple times in minutes from earlier things, and I always thought that Brian had a personal matter to discuss. Personal Should be matter, personnel. Personal. That would be. Thank you. Yeah. Is I'm it good a typo? It no, it's it not. It says personnel. That okay. would be my. I'm good to go now. We could discuss Brian's <laughs> 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 No. So, thanks, thanks Sorry. <laughs> I guess um, just along those lines, though, I want to make sure, I mean, one of the things that became clear last year is that we have sort of a shorthand for thinking about executive session, which is personnel, and there's one other thing, I forget what it is. Well, it's a variety of things. There's personnel, um, student yeah. records, um, yeah. talking yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah. Issues, right? Yeah. But that there actually, the, there are very specific um, uh, uh, criteria around when you can go into executive session, and I just want to make sure as a board this year we're really paying attention to those and we don't just say personnel and, and without looking at those and making sure that we're appropriately executive session. So we'll take that into executive yep. session. Okay, um, any comments on the minutes? Any questions? And then from uh, April 12th? No? Okay. So, um, all in favor of approving the minutes from April 12th? Aye. 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 Um, so now we are up to the uh, interview process for our teaching candidates. And for this, we will go into executive session. I move that we go into executive session for personnel matters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I know this one's all five. So I'll okay. second. Okay, so we're going to go into per, um, executive session at this time um, and for interview purposes. Um, I don't believe it will be very long. Uh, and we have um, Ms. Lampia, if you would stay, please. Thank you. Okay. So who would like to be your timekeeper? Uh, I, we, <laughs> we already addressed. Did we? Permanent, I think, uh, permanent yes. timekeeper. Permanent yes, timekeeper for the year. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, um, can you request for <clears throat> having a uh, item for relevance of board interview candidates? Yes. Will be on our next agenda. Thank you. You're welcome. Could could we reframe that slightly broader, which is would be board involvement in interviewing process? Um, I think that would be great as a discussion item. Okay. And then should we make motions about who? 
Yeah, we do that at the end. Oh, we do that at the end? Oh, okay. I was pulling up their names. I guess I don't need to. Next up is 3.4 Winter Student Learning Outcomes Monitoring Report by uh, yeah. Amy Tong. All right. So I'm really excited to bring you um, kind of all that information on the uh, whole child um, this evening. So as you can see, we've got our pictures from the playground, which uh, that should be worked on in the next couple of weeks. So um, tonight, through this monitoring report, we're going to um, try to better understand our MTSS system. We're going to look at what does our student data tell us about our current state. We're going to identify what has worked well and um, what do we need to investigate further. And what do we need from the board um, in doing this? So the first thing I kind of want to give a little bit of background is the MTSS system. Multi-tiered uh, approach to instruction and intervention is a comprehensive and systematic process for ass assessing and maximizing the opportunities to learn for all students within any content area. And you can see there's a little bit of a different uh, kind of definition of that between the general definition and how Vermont has defined it. But um, I think one of the th main things I want to um, highlight is that it's really a com comprehensive support, which is why we're using a lot of different types of data. It's focused, it, it is on high, qu high quality instruction and intervention that is responsive. So it's not um, just like, you know, you get the special help and it's rinse and repeat or, um, you know, that we're only approaching that special help in one way. There's a lot of different ways that we try to support kids. And that it's really um, about building teacher expertise primarily um, and especially at Tier 1. So Tier 1 is like the general classroom instruction. We've talked about this before. But 80% um, of Tier 1 type of instruction should, or Tier 1 instruction should do it for about 80% of our kids if we're doing it well. And then we get into the tier two uh, kind of reteach the boost kind of thing or some other systematic supports um, with tier three being um, special ed. So we're going to start um, by examining our overall school behavior data. And um, Chris and I are just thrilled, thrilled, thrilled. We um, actually shared this um, entire presentation with the faculty. Um, in, in advance of this board presentation, and they actually helped me draft the last slide. So we'll, we'll get to that. But you can see things are tracking uh, nicely. Uh, you can see here in October, this is the um, kind of launch of the think sheet. So you can see we weren't fully kind of, uh, we were introducing them kind of as, a, as part of the system. September was spent mostly in kind of instructing around the big four and kind of what our behavioral expectations. By October, you know, we're doing some interventions and having more discussions around the behavior. By November and December, uh, you know, we had quite a few. Um, but then, as you can see, the kids really did respond, and we can see a, a kind of dropping off. Now, I'm not going to promise the same level of results for May and June. As Chris pointed out, the weather does do funny things with uh, young hearts. So. Um, Anyways, then we broke it down further and looked at our recess and lunch reports by month. And you can see, um, you know, they're a little variable, but uh, overall tracking downward. So, um, you know, keep in mind, too, we're talking, you know, two, two reports over the course of a month. So even though it looks like a lot it's over a school, that's not a ton. Um, by that point. Amy, are there things that have to uh, meet a level to qualify for even a report behaviors that have to qualify. Uh-huh. I mean, so like what we're talking about is if a kid's, these are kids that have needed more than one reminder. Mm -hmm. Okay. And really this level data is super low. This isn't even like something that would register in any uh, kind of like formalized uh, behavior system. This is just think sheet level. So think about that. So we've made tremendous growth within our learning community in just narrowing, uh, you know, and being able to manage most things with just a, hey, you know, friendly reminder. 
So um, I think that's you know exactly kind of where I want us to be. Amy, do you want questions throughout, or would you prefer us to wait to? Oh, feel free. Let's. Um, so I'm curious uh -huh. just because um, I know last last year's climate data identified the playground in particular as a real hot spot. I think it was yeah. like 40% of kids identified it. Will we be able to, will we be asking that same type of question this year to see the kind of the correlation between this information and how that um, is looking from the kids perspective? Yeah, I think um, there will be a new climate report that comes out. <coughs> um, there were a couple of areas that they sort of examined um, to kind of refine because as many parents pointed out, a couple of it, things were kind of wonky, but there should be something that will uh, track to, to that uh, kind of apples mm. to apples comparison. Great. The wording might be slightly mm. different just because, you know, um, yeah. Okay. So. All right. And the big celebration is this. Check out the buses. Mm. So we are down to like two reports over the course of a month. It was like four in March. It's like beautiful. It's beautiful. For, for, for those that weren't on the board two or three years ago, Chris, it was, uh, I remember it was at a main meeting, it was over 70 incidences. Mm -hmm. that yeah, I was there, so it was within my time. So you're okay. Yeah. Uncontrolled problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really need to celebrate the team in this because it has taken everything from like changing kind of the structure, the, um, being really clear on the expectations, it's taken the bus drivers being diligent to like uphold things. It's taken um, actually kind of oversight from first student. We've had meetings with first student to also reiterate things with bus drivers um, to hold to fidelity with our plan um, and every day checking in on the buses and, um, as well as teachers taking kids so that they're kind of settled and mellow heading to the buses. There's been a lot of, um, I, I just have to say, the team in their consistency has really pulled this off. So, you know, back in September, you know, we were really questioning, we need a monitor. And at this point, the kids are just doing fantastic. I'm so proud of them. So. Um, Amy, does this information get to the um, school community and the community as a whole? It will. It will. Okay. It will. Yeah, I, wanted, I wanted teachers and board to be the first to know. Okay, so. great. Thank you. Yeah. So on to academics. Um, I What we've done is we've split the fall assessments and the winter assessments. The fall assessments include grades one through six. Winter assessments will include kindergarten. And this evening I'm really excited to have uh, Caitlin and Matt here. Um, to share some of their firsthand experiences, and I'll be um, sharing the mic with them too, which I hope will give you guys some contact with teachers that around uh, student learning. So, as you can see here, remember, um, a level three is kind of meets standard, level four is, um, you know, doing uh, better, and level one and two were we've got some concerns around, and um, those are typically kids that are needing support. And as you can see, our number is quite large and it's supposed to be 20% or under. So um, if we take a look at winter. Actually, let me just ask a question, Amy. So one of the things I'm aware from the high school is that sometimes the meet standard is the standard for the end of the year. Is this a meet standard, like this is a standard where you were hoping that people They're would be three or above right now. at that particular month? Okay. This is this is using data that's identifying. This is the data that we use to identify who would be who we should be maybe examining for boost groups, that type of thing. So they're like behind for right now. Okay, so it's spe this it's is time not specific. The, it's not the end of the year. Not the end of the year. <coughs> um, that's the data that we're utilizing, and that's all adjusted for each testing window. Thank you. Okay, great question. Um, so as you can see, we've ha we have had some positive growth. Um, we've had decreases in the areas we want to see some decreases. We've had increases in the area we want to see an increase. We've also had a little decrease in an area I'd rather not see some decrease. But when we're talking about, you know, we're talking about relatively small numbers here, you know, I think we can, um, that's also you know, something to consider. So. Um, and I think what I would love is like for Matt and Caitlin to kind of just 
We have had um, both the building and um, directing more resources towards building literacy. Um, I've done quite a bit of investment uh, in this area this year as we've been trying to develop that as a, um, as a group of colleagues. And I would love for them to just talk about some of their practice and what they're seeing in kids. We're getting ready to have our um, spring assessment, and I would love to hear from them as to how they think that's, that's looking in their realm. Sure. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, so this is my sixth year of teaching kindergarten. I taught preschool for uh, 13 years before that. Um, and this year, I uh, have benefited from some extra professional learning opportunities uh, during the staff meetings with Amy around literacy. And I have taken away a lot from that. And um, my instruction has benefited quite a bit. And I'm seeing the results in my classroom. Um, one of the big learning that I took away this year was um, I, in the past, I've often focused on visual cues with um, the kids and it's really like decoding the sounds <laughs> and, and sight words and um, Amy has really um, shared the emphasis of like a more balanced approach um, with meaning uh, and, and really like having a robust uh, picture walk and, and talk, getting um, like language containers for the books ahead of time. So um, I'm seeing the result in my uh, readers in the kindergarten is that they are using a, a more, um, a wider variety of strategies. And, and it, they're right now um, at grade level or exceeding of the, of the majority of them. Um, those who are not there have made amazing progress. Um, and and it's other factors that have um, contributed to that is um, in the past I've always had the book boxes and I've had three books in the book box and as a matter of resources once we, I introduced a new one I'd take the third one um, and Amy has boosted our library so now I have kids with overflowing book boxes and, and during, when it's read to self time they are just they are just really excited about it um, and they enjoy it and they have a, a lot of opportunities to practice another factor has been um, the ability to collaborate with Caitlin um, and take the learning that I've, we've gotten from Amy and and really talk about our kids as learners and um, talk about what we see um, in our reading groups. And we've even mixed and matched kids from our classes when we see um, learning targets for particular kids that match up. So she'll take some of my students and I'll take some of hers. Um, and also, I, it's just um, like some of the prompts that reinforce the reading strategies we share. Like, oh, this really worked for me. Um, and um, I've just seen a big, big boost. I, I feel better than I ever have about my reading instruction, for sure. I'm excited to grow even more. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and to piggyback on that, um, this is my first year in kindergarten um, here. And, you know, with the last minute shift that we had to make with my assignment, you know, I've been on my toes. There's been a lot to learn. Um, but I felt um, very secure in um, my ability to start to, um, you know, dish out this curriculum with reading with both Matt support and a lot for me. I mean, she's, again, with different things at staff meetings, reading articles, and one thing that I took away was something that three <coughs> teachers do in an article that we had read was really successful um, teachers give a lot of opportunities to read. And the more the kids have opportunities to read, you know, that there's a lot of data that correlates to their success and have um, incorporated that into um, how I've planned my curriculum in the class. And, um, and being able to sit down and 
plan out a lesson um, with Amy and then kind of watch her model it and then reflect on it. Um, I mean, that, that's how I learn, like seeing other professionals do what they do and um, observe and then, you know, take those tips and tools and put them in my teacher tool belt. Um, but this year there's been a lot of new things and the reading instruction has felt really fluid and really smooth and really developmentally appropriate and natural and I mean, they're, they're thriving. I mean, the gross majority of my class are, you know, continuing to, you know, extend beyond end of year grade level reading expectations for kindergarten. And um, like Matt was saying, we're, um, you know, with Amy's expertise and support, we're giving them this broad range of tools and strategies. So we're not just teaching them the sounds that letters make and making it this robotic, you know, focused on decoding strategy. They're, they're gaining all these different strategies that they're pulling and they're using and it's gonna really boost their comprehension uh, moving forward, which can be a stifling kind of plateau um, down the road for readers if they don't have a strong ability to also you know, read the words and understand their meaning. And it's, it's felt really, really natural and they're, it, it's exciting to see how, like, they're just, you know, ready, hungry for it. Anytime I walk in the room with more books, they're like, what books are those? Like, who's are those for? Do I get one? Can I take it home? Um, it's definitely the most exciting part of the world is there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and they're, I mean, having the class sizes that we do and being able to collaborate as much as our schedules have been, you know, um, arranged, that's been a huge, um, just advantage for us and I mean, mostly for the little ones that we serve. So that's, yeah, it's been a great first year in this new and different role and I'm excited to keep learning and moving forward. Where do you get your books? Um, we have a couple of different collections of like early readers that are here. Mm -hmm. um, but when Amy was starting to look through our our library of um, early readers for what we use for our instruction, she quickly noticed that eh, this is a little bit a little bit um, sparks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Don't mince words. <laughs> Um, figured out a way to allocate resources to start adding to that and we've all been pulling from that immediately and it's been so helpful because when kids are super hungry to read but they've already read everything it's you know you don't want to stifle there. Do you mean where do we order them from or where do we um, go to get them? Well both. I mean how do you do you have adequate supply of books and uh, adequate variety and then you know, it sounds like you coordinate with Amy on that, but is there enough books to fulfill the needs that your students have? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. We've made improvements. Great. We're just going to help all that. Yeah. The, the thing with kindergarten, too, is the quality of the books can be highly irregular. Yeah. Particularly, um, you know, some of them are just ridiculous, and they have to be predictable texts. But they don't have to be ridiculous texts that don't make any sense. I don't think that feeds the joy of learning. Um, I do think a simple story can for a beginning reader. But you don't want to keep them at that really simplistic level any longer than what you have to. What our goal is is that they can walk into the library here and grab really like anything that fascinates them, right? And um, I think that's what we're shooting for. But it's also important for them to fall in love with books from the beginning. And to do that, you have to have high interest, interesting, colorful, engaging books um, to offer them. So um, I've been just like so thrilled with the level of collaboration between Matt and Caitlin this year, as well as especially around literacy. And um, they've really taken to heart a lot of the best practices, which is, you know, when teachers are gathered around student work and student learning, kids' outcomes improve like so reliably it's it's just 
it's amazing. So, um, appreciate you guys coming this evening. Did you have any other questions? For well, them? I just wanted to say because we um, never addressed this because the beginning of the year everything happened so quickly, but I definitely felt um, very thankful that the school took a look at that kindergarten class and made and supported um, the decision that was made. I don't know the details of how that was done, but I know how tough it was because it happened so close to the start of the school year. And so I want to thank both of you and um, Amy for allowing it to happen, even though, um, you know, uh, communication wise and in terms of uh, some other things a lot of people would have just stayed away from it even though there was a lot of data to support it and I think it's made a huge difference for the kids and um, I love that you two can collaborate as I get to see a lot of your work as a parent and I see the times that um, the classes are separate and the times they're together like it's just been so seamless people you would really think that you'd work together for five years so it's been amazing and I can definitely attest to all the literacy data that you shared. It's been um, like emotionally overwhelming to see, um, you know, like the reading skills develop. Like every day I'm surprised by something new and um, it's like, that's the kid's gateway to their whole life. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Yeah, um, that, was, that was a really great, actually a great, bonding moment for the primary team as we all gathered around and tried to make a child-centered decision. So, um, great. On to math. Oh, wait. No, not quite yet. <laughs> so, because you always ask. Um, this is all schools uh, reading data across CSU, so you can see how we compare. Um, our results are school one, and I don't know who any of the others are. So how do we read, even how do we read this? Uh, these are the percentages at each of the um, oh, achievement one. levels by each school. Oh, is school one, the Roman one up top? So this is our okay. school. This is our the data oh, I just oh, shared oh. with you. Right. Okay, and then these are the other elementary schools followed by the whole FCU. So the great thing is, is like I think we have seen uh, improvements in our scores with um, collective focus, um, and I think both uh, the literacy data as well as the behavior data shows that um, you know the grass is greener where you water it, and we're going to uh, continue working on these things. So um, as you can see, you know I still would like to see our tier our ones and twos shrink the number of those. Mm -hmm. And I see no reason that that's not possible. And percentage-wise, <coughs> I can't add and divide quite that fast. Are we still higher than the other schools for for the amount of students that we have in levels one and two? No. Or is that shrinking? Um, it's, it's more on par. Okay. We're not the highest um, there, but it's more on par, at least in the level one, two range. Okay. Do you feel... Um, so when I look at this, I, I can't help but notice that we are, you know, definitely nowhere near the top. Uh, do you feel like you have what you need and that you're on? I mean, to change the course of a, of a chart like this, it's going to take a really long time. Do you feel like you have, like you're on the trajectory or do you feel like you need more support or resources or something to be able to, I don't know if that makes sense. to just be able to continue to focus on learning. And we've got okay. some um, areas that, you know, I think getting the behaviors kind of like yeah. um, functioning a little bit like more smoothly across the school just allows more of our time to be focused on the, the learning as well as, you know, when kids feel good about how they're navigating the social realm, they do better academically. Um, so all of those factors, I think, just, you know, continue to, to help things. Um, you know, I, I feel like we do need additional uh, focus and uh, learning around this. I did not get through my full sequence um, that I had hoped to. But okay. Can um, you explain what that means a little more? Sure. Um, so we got through the initial kind of like um, learning, like kind of the, the groundwork. 
and then there's additional work. As Matt was sharing, having a well-balanced approach that incorporates meaning making as well as language structure is really critical to develop kids that really comprehend reading well in three, four, five, and six. Um, in addition, having plenty of stuff to read and having robust read-alouds feeds their vocabulary acquisition. And so all of those factors, like we're not, we aren't there with even, um, so I wasn't able to get, I, we weren't able to get to the point where we were working on the comprehension <coughs> and how you collect formative data around that and how you develop some of that and some of our vertical slices and there are a whole slew of things that we'll look forward to doing next year together um, at different points, but. Um, we just, we needed to shift into some collaborative planning set up for next year. And so that um, kind of has taken some time. Fair enough. So, so you feel happy, I think so. So you, do you feel happy like you're on the right track or do you feel like yeah, you wish? I mean, it, it looks, yeah, definitely like better than I would have even. Yeah, so I but, think great. You know, I've got awesome teachers and you know, when they're working together and able to focus on kids learning and have the materials, you know, I think all those things can't hurt. Do you have the materials you need? Huh? Do you have all the materials you need? Not at all. Okay, so we should talk. Well, <laughs> is that in the, at the we'll end, the, the yeah. school board so, support? Yep. Yeah. So coming along is math. You can see our math scores are actually, um, I'm equally concerned about. So here we have about 60% of our kids in fall that were below a level three. we compare the um, winter assessment data, um, you know, I think we're doing more cycles of um, kind of progress monitoring is what it's called um, in an MTSS system where you're analyzing who's kind of falling behind, what supports we can give either in the classroom or out of the classroom, and, um, you know, kind of what is the underlying problem that we could um, hopefully um, backfill. Um, and you can see we've had um, some increases um, in some positive areas, not to the level of the literacy, but um, you know, I think at least things are improving. And is the school using um, a math uh, curriculum and um, that's aligned with the rest of the SU? Yes. I with mean, the learning outcomes materials. at each grade level, that's the same? So what was that again? Um, so the, I think that the SU a few years ago had math learning outcomes for each grade level mapped out, and I'm wondering if Romney uses those same yeah, ones we're, that we're the other schools. Yeah, we're using the SU materials as well as um, access to the math coach. Um, um, they've had the training with Mahesh um, to develop some of that like understanding of the development and um, range of you know skills within each area of development um, that kind of help to know where to go back to when mm -hmm. we find that there's a deficit mm -hmm. um, but in general um, math is a, a more difficult area to kind of backfill content wise um, just from a, a teacher standpoint so yeah, um, and we're certainly looking at a different math progression than we used to. Um, it's much more accelerated and really grows exponentially come fourth and fifth grade. So, I mean, to follow up on Carolyn's question about the materials, and going back to the literacy, was do we use the SU materials in literacy or the SU curriculum in literacy as well? Is that across the issue? Is that so? Different? There's there's been some um, areas of study that they've done as an SU, mm -hmm. but um, I think that it was just time. You know, any professional development evolves as well as you will have um, new staff come on that kind of thing. It was just time for us to align. I think in how our practices were reflected, the strategies. I mean, don't you think that was kind of good, Matt? It's okay. Just that, um, you know, there has been focused um, uh, yeah, times yeah. here in, in literacy, but it's been a while. We've added staff members, and it was just time to kind of align around yes. our thinking. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, and just the language is important for it to be kind of like, 
you know how he was refer referring to prompting and that type right. of thing? Mm -hmm. If the prompting can kind of be similar, then it becomes like a shorthand, because um, you want most of the kids' focus going to the processing, not to the teacher's words. So just aligning those types of things really helps students. Okay. okay. So your question was aligning with the, yeah, the supervisor. Just, and, and it's just kind of it was like mine, but for literacy. For the math, but the same question for literacy. Yeah, well, I mean, we have these curriculum camps at the end of the year where it, it does provide an opportunity for us to, to align in these different areas. Um, um, and we're, we all have the same performance indicators for the, for the different um, subject areas. I don't know that we're all meeting those performance indicators in the same way. Um, 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 but um, those opportunities at the, the curriculum camp where we can talk about how are you doing it. How, so we're, we're kind of getting there. And when we had opportunities to meet as great alike, like we did on Tuesday, right. with the math coach, with the other kindergarten um, teachers, yeah. and the SU, things like that are helping us um, get there with the vision. Thank you. What are the tools you use for assessment? Um, in literacy or math? <laughs> Both one. Both. In math, we're primarily using uh, STAR 360 as our universal okay. screener. Um, in uh, you guys use PNOA type of well we have um, WCSU benchmark assessments that we do mm -hmm. that, um, another thing that we developed uh, mm -hmm. teachers work together to develop um, during this curriculum camp so um, okay. so I think each grade level has a different benchmark assessment um, and then there's the, the star 360 and then the, for literacy we all have the same uh, we have Fontes and Pinnell, and then we all have the same literacy assessment schedule across the district. Right. So there is like the comprehensive <coughs> assessment uh, plan that we um, really have uh, been trying to hold to with Fidelity this year. So um, this is all schools math data, so you can see kind of how things are lining up. <coughs> So um, our successes I drafted with uh, the teachers. Um, we have seen major reductions in bus issues um, by using monitoring logs daily, assigned seats, a flow at dismissal, repeated work with the bus company and drivers, increased reporting of problems so kids are more likely to let, let us know if there's something not exactly great on the bus, and clear expectations for students. Um, overall behavior incidents have gone down from 109 a month to just a, a little over 40 per month across K-6. This has been achieved by making our expectations clear and accessible, monitoring think sheet data, weekly collaboration with teachers, SST meetings, developing strategy-based support plans for kids. Um, and I, I do want to um, just highlight, you know, again, the think sheets are not a punishment. They're a, a learning tool and a conversation tool. but. More than that, it's an early alert system for us to see when kids are struggling. And so we can do something positive about it. Playground and lunchroom have also had a decrease in behavior incidents by using clear expectations and boundaries, increased monitoring, intentional heterogeneous groups, improvements in routines while preserving student choice in play groups and space. Um, in the academics, the number of students performing at proficient level in ELA increased by 15.6% in the period between fall and winter, <clears throat> and the number of students performing at proficient level in math increased by 5.7% between fall and winter. So what do we need from you? Um, here are the, I'm sorry, I just skipped ahead. Our possible improvements in tier one are predictable large blocks of uninterrupted, uninterrupted time for the core subjects. Um, I've had many iterations of the schedule and I'm almost to my final draft. Um, 
we want to do some work as just a faculty in UDL, to increase, which is Universal Design for Learning, to increase the tools for making learning more accessible for all kids. Um, continued coaching in ELA. Um, there's certain days that I'm more of a coach than a principal, and that's, um, I think, been, it's been a nice way for us to kind of get to know each other as teachers. Um, we need an addition. Uh, addition of supporting materials for readers workshop and um, regular a regular scheduled purchase of needed materials for core more replenishment of that is needed and in particular classroom libraries are still um, pretty weak I would say we're gonna think the staff and I mainly um, decided to kind of focus our attention first on <coughs> primary grades because upper grades are really happy with kind of um, still coming to the library to peruse and find something they like here. Um, but the classroom libraries and the primary grades, that's where you hook kids and they go through just so many books. So um, we're looking, uh, working with um, Jen on piloting a math program within WCSU in collaboration with other um, schools. And we'll be receiving additional coaching in math, um, specifically in math menu. In fact, um, Ellen came um, yesterday and did a fantastic job uh, introducing the concept of math menu, which um, was great for us to just make some connections between Reader's Workshop and how you can provide some differentiation in math. Um, in Tier 2, we're looking at more frequent progress monitoring for students. Um, we've also dedicated time in each classroom schedule for Tier 2 um, boost or um, Tier 3 work that isn't impacting their core um, instruction in that, in that subject area, or they're not missing science to get math remediation, that kind of thing. Um, we're going to focus most of our tier two energy in the primary grades um, to ensure daily repetitions, because one of the flaws that we found was to, that a lot of the boost was being deployed um, n with not enough reps to like close the gap. Um, and so between the additional progress monitoring and making sure that kids are getting five days a week to really close that gap over a short period of time, um, I think it will help us shrink that um, gap. And then we're also looking to increase communication with parents um, for kids that are in Tier 2. So um, we had some great ideas emerge out of our um, interviews around that. So um, anyway, so that's kind of what we're thinking for our possible improvements for next year. Can you go on just a minute, sure. please? Um, were you able to put um, some more meat on the bones when you say um, additional supporting materials? Exactly what, are you able to put together a plan of what you think that that would look like um, and, and the costs associated with it? Um, well, I, I think what we're doing is we're looking creatively at um, kind of how our monies are allocated right now. As it is, um, and I talked really openly with teachers and we brainstormed, there's a really high, um, a lot of our classroom allotments go directly to the teacher and it doesn't work like that in many, many schools. Mm -hmm. Instead, uh, you would have a certain amount per child for consumable supplies, etc. cetera. Um, you would have a certain amount um, designated as book money or you might have a collective uh, book money that would allow you to fill gaps. So like, for instance, if you don't have enough books at a certain level, you know, because both kindergarten, first graders, and second graders can land at that, in that realm, and they're not to the library level yet, um, then it allows us to kind of beef up that area. So um, teachers were very open to um, not getting quite as generous of a classroom, uh, you know, budget mm -hmm. in a way for us to pool our money to buy these materials together. So um, we're kind of sorting through that, but um, you know, I, there's some curriculum materials that we're, we're looking for that are being used in some other schools in the SU, and I think uh, our students would benefit from, but really um, the best way to learn to read is through reading. <laughs> so um, I want to make sure kids have high interest books that are high quality. So. I thought of something uh, when you were talking about the literacy that um, okay. So that is the Reader's Workshop materials that she has up there. I know um, teachers 
in other schools in our district are using um, Lucy Hopkins' Creators Workshop model, and she has um, good, really good supporting materials for that. And so, so that is what um, Amy has underneath there on your tier one. And that, and that is something that other schools in our district are using. And good. teachers were open to you know us getting that over the summer, and um, but I mean. That'll unify the mini lesson, which is a, a small snippet for the whole group, right? And then you'll have this little power pellet, which is their guided reading group. But most of the time in a reader's workshop, kids are reading high interest stuff that will make them fall in love with books that are accessible and not frustrating. So um, that just supports that model. So, but again, we do need to boost classroom libraries. That's um, is there any sort of um, SU? sort of purchasing collective like can we do we purchase as part of the SU or can we gain any advantage by talking to all the other schools and buying together Heinemann doesn't work that way okay <laughs> that, that's the exactly mm -hmm. how, yeah. how about um, in, because I thought you said before that kids go through books quickly yeah because they're reading shorter they're not into like chapter books as much or really expansive is there uh, a way to coordinate with the other SUs the other schools and just change books yeah. from school to school because if they're going through them that quickly, they must go through. They must have the same problem. I, I definitely more. would. I'll tell you the way that uh, K two kids utilize books. I mean, you just need my my last classroom. I had I had twelve hundred <laughs> books, and that was just about right. Yeah, twelve hundred books in my classroom library. That was not from the library. Right. So. And I also think even just sharing <laughs> amongst. Caitlin, then it's like a logistical like figuring yeah. that out. Is like, the size of the yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so board supports. Um, continued support of tier two intervention services will be needed. We're really excited about just having more literacy uh, support as well as um, kind of having CHIP uh, more focused on just tier two math. Um, an investment in a possible investment in the math program could be on the horizon in 2019 2020 so just heads up there um, investment in additional literacy resources such as a classroom library level as well as LOI kits are going to be needed for tier two so Jessica and I've already been talking about like where we should target um, for adding LOI kits um, to support tier, tier two um, I believe that the scheduling improvements that um, I'm making right now will add additional collaboration and embedded um, professional learning opportunities, which as you can see from Matt and Caitlin really do benefit teachers to have that time to sort of focus and um, work on new learning together and figure stuff out together. And it helps build collective efficacy, which is one of the highest yield practices that we can have as a school. And um, please help us celebrate the small wins because, as you pointed out, Allison, improvements in those core areas is a multi-year effort. It won't happen overnight, no matter how dedicated my teachers are or how focused we are. So, uh, any other questions? I had a question, but it was on the previous slide. Sure. But it was about increased communication with parents, uh -huh. and it was under Tier 2. Yeah. I was curious if that meant specific parents like a communication system for communicating like with parents around their child or overall communication oh it means more uh, focused if it, your child is receiving tier two services and we're progress monitoring them let's say just randomly in fractions then you'll get updates okay, okay. perfect that answers through the question. that through that time mm -hmm. where they're in that group so thanks um, Thank you very much. You really thank you. very informative. Matt and Caitlin, thank you again for yeah, joining thank us. This thank, thank you. Thank you. Feel free to boogie on to get some rest whenever you <laughs> so right. want. Go on to the flint tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, next up, we have the um, three point five notes of my vision to Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello, beautiful school.
board. Look at you, you're so perky. <laughs> Thank you for being here instead of out tilling your garden like you wish you were. <laughs> and thanks for putting me on your agenda. So you guys got the memo about the Vision Action Fund. Did everybody have a chance to look at it? Mm -hmm. um, um, the Solutions Committee. Does anybody need one? Next, I would as well. The, the FAQ. Sure. Um, Do you have extra still? I have one more. It, it's that's the FAQ. Um, but um, yeah. so the solutions committee yeah. is um, looking at putting on an event in the fall. Um, to, uh, with, a, with, a, with a bunch of different goals. Basically, there's just a ton going on in Middlesex right now. I suppose you probably all know that the town plan is being redone. Um, uh, er, they do it every five years, and they're getting toward the end of, of their thinking on that, but they'd really like participation. Um, you might have heard that Red Hen has new owners now. Um, that's Mike Culture and his group. So, so do you mean, you mean new owners as in owning the business or owning the actual Physical. facility of the Both. houses, the Red Hat? Yeah. Right. Okay. The second. Um, and all of this sort of property that goes with it. And in fact, I believe, my understanding is that they even are expanding uh, that the, the, the ownership. So um, they're, I think they, they bought maybe the White House that's sort of next to mm -hmm. the Red Hat property. And mm -hmm. um, thinking about, I think that the, um, the Sally's... Um, I think, they might have I think they've done all of that well. at this point. Yeah. 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 So with and, and Mike Scott and his partners have some ideas about you know what that might look like for them, what development might look like for them, and it's up to them, of course, they're the owners. But um, w you know, changes in our village, you know, it, or it's a significant moment, um, and it's I think can be helpful to have feedback from, from the community or, or, or communication with the community about when, when big changes like that happen. And, and obviously, you know, stuff that's going on at Romney as well. These are all really big things. And I think there's a bit of the blind man and the elephant thing where everybody feels like they, they're part of Middlesex. They understand, you know, I'm the blind man and I'm feeling the leg and I know that Middlesex is a tree, but, you know, there's the other blind man who's feeling the trunk and knows that Middlesex is a snake and somebody else who's feeling the ear and they think that Middlesex is a piece of paper. And I think all those the things are all true. Um, but we don't communicate with each other all that well. And that's really typical of communities that I've worked with a facilitator everywhere. I mean that, that that happens a lot. So we're hoping that a visioning forum for the community a celebration and forum will help um, us sort of reconnect some of the various parts of of our community that can easily get kind of, you know, we just get in our own space. We get we get uh, disconnected. And it feels a little bit like like digging in the garden when the soil has just been in one place all year. And then when you dig, you just mix it up. And if the circulation is better. You might move some of the snakes aside and, you know, get things better. So these are all, I think, reasons to have a vision action form, and I've been kind of wanting to do one for years. It's it's a type of facilitation that I really enjoy doing, and I've always thought Middlesex could use it, but it hasn't seemed like the moment, and it's been seeming like it like the moment lately. Um, and then with the town plan thing happening, it just seemed like a good idea. So we tentatively set the date as September 21st and 22nd, um, and uh, wanting to try and get it in before the town plan gets finalized and goes out for review so that the information from the Vision Action Plan can actually inform the planning process. Um, but wanted to, to put it far enough out that we would have time to engage people in the planning. Um, I've been involved in a few dozen of these. The Vision Action Form is a process that came from um, the Upper Valley, the Connecticut River Valley of, of Vermont, New Hampshire, and the League of Women Voters put it together. and, and um, and my sister was the director of the of the program who create that created it, and so she's done like 75 of these across New England and also in Eastern Europe and in Alaska. She's done lots of different ones, and I have acquired her commitment to come and do one for us, which is pretty cool because she's really good at it, and then I don't have to do it, which is great. And um, uh, so she's a really good facilitator, um, and. 
the the idea is that it's a day and a half. It's sort of it's a Friday night and Monday Saturday event, and the idea is to have as many uh, and as diverse um, folks as possible involved. So old timers, newcomers, parents, retirees. Um, you know, and the way that you do that, the way that you get lots of engagement is by having lots of people involved in the planning. Um, so that they can have buy into their, the, the piece that, that means, means the most to them. The celebration piece, or, you know, involving artists, uh, you can involve kids, um, you can involve businesses, there are a lot of different ways. Every town is different. But it's a facilitated process, big group, small group, big group, small group so that people have a chance to really talk with each other, but then get into the big group and sort of hear the, uh, what, you know, what other people are saying. Um, there are 10 topic areas that it starts with that were designed by the, the National Civic Week, so it's the 10 things that every strong, sustainable community has. So there's a discussion on leadership, there's discussion on business, economy, um, there's discussion on education, there's discussion on um, uh, natural resources, you know, there's there's sort of ten different areas that you start with, and then people sort of hone in on what is resonating right now for Middlesex, and hopefully at the end, what you want to do is some action projects that people can actually step up into. So not so much advice for them as what are we <coughs> going to do. do we want. So that's I, I, I wanted to come and let you know that I've talked to the select board about it and I've talked to the planning commission about it and they're like, yeah, no. Um, talk to, I've talked to Amy about it. She's like, what can we do to help? Um, uh, and I'm working my way through you guys, the Conservation Commission, uh, Fire Department, you know, <laughs> everywhere, please help. Um, I wanted to let you know. Um, I wanted to ask for your help in, in getting part diverse participation. Um, I want to start the conversation of how we can make this event most useful to Romney. How we can make sure that it is useful to you at this time. Um, I know that there's a lot going on at Romney. Um, I know you guys have been talking about what to, you know, whether to have a forum this spring or whether to have a forum. I'm really hoping that this doesn't conflict with the various discussions you've been having about having an internal forum at Romney, and if it does, I'm more than willing to talk about changing the date of this event. Um, you know, it's the, when I talked to the planning commission about it, they were like, September would be great because then we can stick with our schedule of hopefully having a town plan to vote on at town meeting. But they also <coughs> said they'd be willing to push that date back and have the vote some other time if that works better for other um, groups. So uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a dance, you know, and uh, we we want to be as useful to each of the committees as possible, and that's what we heard from the Planning Commission, but I want to know what's useful to you as well. Um, and I also really have a personal interest um, uh, in making sure that Remy shines the brightest uh, at this event as possible because it's, I mean, I feel like in a sense kind of Rem Middlesex kind of has two hearts, you know, we've got Romney and we've got the village, physically speaking, that's where people kind of see each other. and. They need to connect, they need to understand each other, they need, they need to um, sort of, you know, understand that they are one. And, and I want to help make that happen as much as possible, whether that's through kid involvement, whether it's having an art opening that happens here with no sex artists as part of the, the Vision Action Forum, um, having childcare for the event obviously will help parents get involved. Um, we, we talked about maybe having Remy be the location of the Vision Action Forum. It kind of makes sense because, like I said, big group, small group. So you've got, if you've got a, whatever, hopefully 100 people, um, then they break it into 10 groups. It's kind of hard to do that at town. Um, but it's, the school tends to be a pretty good place for it. So, um, so I wanted to start the conversation and see what you guys think. Questions? You, have you you participated in, in these types of yes okay, and based on your experience what is the um, tools that people use to come to get out participants to have invite participants and what hmm. will will draw them in basic solid community organizing that has to do with reaching out to existing <coughs> leaders of so like I said fire department you know 
idea. Um, and finding out what is most useful to them and then helping make sure that the event itself, hopefully through their participation, reflects their needs and, and wants. Um, and um, then just a ton of conversations um, and you know face to face one on one or you know small group discussions um, and you know truthfully it helps a lot when people I mean this isn't something I can I mean I suppose I probably could do myself if I didn't actually have a life <laughs> <laughs> but you know in terms of like there's there's going to be several meals involved there's mm -hmm. going to be childcare there's going to be you know any associated things like maybe like I said art or childcare or those kinds of things that all takes volunteers. Um, and those volunteers then have um, some buy-in and will show up and you know know they understand the event and they understand what it's for and that that's the way to get participation is to get lots of um, um, help. So it's tricky that the date isn't ideal in that you're coming into summer and summer is a hell of a time to get anybody to do anything. And then it kind of happens. September twenty first is boom right after the school mm -hmm. year begins. So it's it's going to be um, it's it's not a, it's not ideal <laughs> um, in terms of getting volunteers. But I'm hopeful that if I can um, get some folks um, to understand what it is between now and the end of the school year, we might be able to. It, it, you, most of the work isn't done in one big committee. It's mostly done. Susan, can you, I, I tend to be a fairly concrete thinker, and I'm <clears throat> one thing that would really help me is to sort of hear an example of what came out of one of these for another town or two different towns to kind of give a sense of the range of possibility. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I actually just finished doing one in Haverhill, New Hampshire, um, and one of the big, they had actually done one 10 years ago, and they were ready for another one, because these are the kinds of things, in the Upper Valley, um, it's, there are more communities that are doing them. One of the things that came out of it 10 years ago for them was they, they've been talking about recreation. They're a bigger community than us. I think they're more small community, um, but very rural, very agricultural. And they really wanted more recreation opportunities for their kids. And what they wound up with 10 years ago was saying, you know what, we're serious about this. We want a recreation committee. And they so out of it came a committee, which is not them saying to their select board, form a committee. It was, we want to create a committee. And the select board was like, yeah, you do it. And in the meantime, they have actually hired a recreation director. Um, so um, that was that was one thing that came out of out of theirs. Um, uh, oftentimes, communication is a theme, and um, historically, because we've been doing this since the '90s, historically, think people communities would do things like realize that they needed a newsletter. <laughs> Those were the days. Um, <laughs> but more likely now to be an electronic you know, means of communication. Um, sometimes a regular um, uh, potluck, you know, let's, let, let's have a you know, monthly potluck and talk about time issues. Um, generally speaking, I, I mean, a, a trend that I've noticed that I thought was really sort of cool, and as a person who cares about sustainability, very validating, a sustainable community tends to have a good balance between the three-legged stool of environment, economy, and social issues. And what I tended to find with these is that usually there comes comes out one project in each of those categories. So there's something environmental, whether it's we need a little a trail system or we should found a conservation commission or we want a committee that's going to help purchase forest land for a town. There's something environmental and then something economic like we want a, um, the Haverhill this year Haverhill um, wanted an entrepreneurship network. They were like, we've got a lot of tiny entrepreneurs in our town. We, we, they should be connected better. And, and we've named that as, as a goal. And we want especially entrepreneurs that are land-based, um, you know, place-based, because they're very agricultural. Um, so that's a network that they're going to launch. Um, sometimes it's a downtown revitalization, depending on the size of the town. There's um, you know, village beautification, those kinds of things. Um, and then social. Yeah, like I said, communication often is one. Sometimes education, sometimes even just like a skateboard park, you know, something for kids to do. So they're, they tend to you know, range between something sort of an ongoing discussion kind of thing to here's a physical thing that we want to achieve and we're going to raise money for it. So um, it's quite a range and it really varies from community to community. So what comes out of it? It's really helpful. I was really excited to see this, um, and partly I didn't, uh, when I ran for the school board, it was because I wanted to sort of help engage the community, which actually I'm, I'm terrible at, so 
it was a bit of an odd choice. But I don't know if everybody can see this. Look, I don't know if you guys can see this picture. Do you see that picture? It's a cement troll under a bridge and he's holding a Volkswagen Beetle. Yes. <laughs> so the reason I'm showing you this is because I went to Oops, this really cool, uh-oh, that's just my, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, well there was a really cool troll under a bridge holding a Volkswagen <laughs> Beetle. And um, I went to this, um, this training on community engagement and it was actually really, really good. And so one community got together and they had a problem. They had a bridge that had mess under it that was filled with broken glass and people were going there to do things they shouldn't do. And they were trying to figure out what do we do? Do we fence it off, do this? So they had one of these community forums and the people decided, let's build a troll under here and make it an attraction. So that's what they did and like it worked really well. And it was just kind of an interesting thing that came out of it. They made a few points, one of them, that really stuck with me was that to get good community engagement, you have to have con you have to have little things all the time. And we're going to talk about board goals soon, but uh, something that I've really been trying to think of is how can we have regular things at Rumney to try to get parents into the school? And they said at this forum, one of the most important things that you can do is never have it be a one track thing. So if parents are going to come into the school, and if you're going to get people to come into the school for something, have it be more than one attraction. So let's say we come here to talk about A, well, let's make sure that we have, um, you know, on the trails committee has something on the wall so that we can go look at that while we're here to constantly be trying to get people to understand the different areas that they can engage in. And so this feels like a great potential way that we could work together to try to get parents more interested in Rumney, get our families back in our school, get our community back in our school, and at the same time start to, to think about some of these other um, components of a successful community. Um, so I, I really like the idea of, of trying to brainstorm and work together and, and make something happen along those lines. Um, for people to talk about things. Great. Concerns? Actually, it might be a good opportunity to gauge the community how they want to use the school. And, you know, because you, you would have, hopefully, a broad spectrum. And, you know, folks who have regular meetings um, at certain places, um, it would probably be form for that. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the forum has, like, um, the handout has, well, it's, it was, there was, I think, an attachment that we had as well, but it's, it's the one that I just handed, has the, a, a draft agenda on the back of it. And um, so you'll see that it's a pretty specific um, format where you divide people up to talk about those 10 key issues, mm -hmm. the 10 components that I talked about. Um, and each of each under each of those 10, this is on Friday night, under each of those 10, um, each um, is assigned to, through a facilitated process, come up with five key issues under that topic. Um, so under you know those key issues, the, the, those, those uh, components that I was talking about. And so at the end of the night, what you've got is 10 groups that have named the five key issues under whatever it is, recreation, arts, education, da da da. So you've got 50, the 50 key issues of Middlesex. And you don't show them to anybody. That's why they come back on Saturday morning, to see the 50 key issues. Um, and through that, that's how you find the threads. Because oftentimes, you know, you'll start to see threads that it's like, oh, I see that the arts people really feel like they need a place to mm, gather, but I'm seeing that that's also something that's running through recreation. And I also see, you know, and you start to see that gathering place might be, you know, an issue. And actually, that was one in April. But, um, you know, and, and the, or communication or different threads start, start to emerge. Um, and then you have facilitated process to actually address those issues that emerge. So, um, there can be time during a break, um, during a pre-event, you know, those kinds of things to do things like let's have a, this is a moment where everybody's coming through, let's have them do a survey or let's have them, um, at, you know, answer this question or those kinds of things. Um, uh, but um, really, if, if there's something that's roiling in people's, you know, minds or trusts, you know, um, it's likely to come out through the process, through the, through the process. Um, uh, and, you get, you know, three or four actionable projects, but you also get a report of everything that was said during the day and a half. So there's also, there's a lot of trends that you can find and things that committees can act on even if they didn't train to be a connection committee. 
And that the Friday night part, by the way, is really celebratory. I mean, there's a dinner, there's, you know, um, hopefully um, presentations by students, uh, ideally, if, if we can get our act together. I, I, I've been in touch with Jen, um, you know, um, Campbell, to see if maybe there could be a companion student art show to go with the grown-up art show, mm -hmm. and, you know, those kinds of things as, as an idea. We'll see what comes up. May 17th um, is our launch meeting, which um, it would be great if somebody from the school board was able to, to attend that. Um, uh, Where? Town Hall. Town Hall. Um, what's that? Oh, what time? 7 o'clock. Yeah. Um, and we'll just sort of, I've got a little video, a little four minute video that sort of lets people know what this thing looks like. Um, and just try and get, a, 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 you know, better, get the word out and get some understanding of, of what it is and see if we can get some volunteers for some of the tasks. Um, and uh, and then I'm sure we'll have two or three more meetings before um, uh, everybody breaks for the summer to try and get as much as we can underway. What do you guys think about the, the time? Is, um, is it... About the time? Like timing in terms of September. In terms of everything that you've got on your plates and... Uh, no, no. I think we've learned that no timing is ideal. And so I would... I Personally, I wouldn't let that hold you back. Mm -hmm. um, I don't... Yeah, I, I don't see anything that we're dealing with that. Yeah, I I, I think that I don't, I don't see it. I wouldn't stall what you're doing to kind of wait on us. I um, agree with that. I think you just move forward. Okay. Um, and how it works generally. Well, was I was thought maybe I heard that you did not necessarily want like a whole bunch of things exploding at Romney. In the prelude to this, is that is that right? So like, yeah, 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 we should think if if we're going to try and do a community meeting, we might want to think about giving some distance between the two events. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. And again, if if you need us to you know push this into October, we can we can talk about that. Okay. November. I mean, right now, I mean, it'd be good to know. <laughs> it'd be good to know as soon as possible and see, and see if I can get Delia's uh, facilitation schedule moved, if that's, if that's, uh, but, and I'll have to talk to the planning commission. So it's, 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 it's we're, we really just want it to work. And, you know, it's also a question of, of um, I mean, there's a lot of people who have kids at running, and we want young parents involved. This is the, that sort of tends to be the age that people, one of the things that the Vision Action Forum does is grow volunteers. And people whose kids are in school tend to be just kind of stepping into their public selves, you know, they're starting to realize that what they do makes a difference in the future. And some of them obviously have been public, had public selves all along, but um, it tends to be a, um, a, a significant moment. And if we can make it, um, uh, available to parents of young kids. It's it's a um, it's a really it's an important element of local democracy you know, to to grow that kind of ability to, to be a um, public actor, you know, volunteer for the community when you never had before. That kind of stuff. So do uh, you know, funding issue in terms of if we're going to have babysitters and things like that. How how is that being funded, or how is the expectation? For it to be funded. Great question, Chris. Um, I, right now, I ha I have not figured that out yet. Um, and the select board has said, we have some discretionary money. We think this is a good idea. We will help. Um, and they didn't put a dollar figure on that. Although they they said we there's no question that we can absolutely cover the cost of a mailing. Um, so that's one thing. But I mean, th there, a lot of this stuff can be done on the cheaper for free. And I've done these. I mean, when you, we did it in Norwich, you know, they are like rolling in money, and they were like, "Oh, we're going to have each of the each of the local restaurants um, do um, a different um, dinner entree for the meal." You know, I mean, it was like the dinner was just this amazing, you know, like competition between elite restaurants. Whereas I've done other ones that were potlucks, and I've done other ones that where they didn't want a potluck because they were afraid to eat some of their first food. So I mean, <laughs> The whole range, you let's know. Hope, let's hope okay. they don't have access to Orca. What's that? Let's hope Norwich residents don't have access to Orca. <laughs> we love Norwich. Um, and, um, so, it, so uh, you know, I, middle sex, knowing middle sex, and, you know, if I can get Liz Sharp involved, we'll probably have spaghetti. But, um, <laughs> 
but you know, it, it, so and you know, often we can get things as you guys know from from the many fabulous pie breakfasts and everything. You can get things um, donated, but some stuff has to cost money. A mailing costs real money. Childcare costs real money. And I would love it. I would love to have the childcare not cost money for the parents. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what for town meeting. That's a compromise that we've made. Personally, it feels like a compromise to me to have the parents pay for the child care, but I would love the, for the child care to be free. So if, I don't know if you guys have any discretionary funding. That would be a, 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 a target place to put it, in my opinion, um, so that we can actually say free child care. Um, so I'll see if I can get the, the fire department to come and bring a fire truck so that the kids can play on it at, no, at noon. <laughs> you know, whatever different um, resources we can use. Um, but. Um, you know, DLA has volunteered her time. That's a, a significant portion of funding for these things, usually, is the facilitator. Um, and then there's the PR, there's the food. Um, I, I, I'm going to go for some grants, but um, who knows? You know, a lot, a lot of that money, money is drying up. So. Um, we might ask local businesses for little donations. I don't really know. I don't know if you guys have any insights on whether that's a good idea or not. It's, it feels like, we always go back to the same well, you know, mm -hmm. that stuff, but. And you have a planning meeting on the 17th, mm -hmm. so you, that will probably be something that they talk about, is mm -hmm. funding and yes. donations yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Is there anybody um, able and willing to go on the 17th? What day of the week is it? It's Thursday. And I should, I found out too late that it is the corporate cup. So it's next Thursday. Yeah. It's going to be an interference. What's that? Next Thursday. Yeah. yeah. I might be able to, uh, but I, I, you know, I would hope that other people would as well. Yeah. I can't. Uh, my husband's out of town. Okay, let me try. I'll, I'll put on my calendar. It, it's open. How long do you expect the meeting to be? How late? How long? Yeah. Oh, an hour and a half, I would guess. Mm -hmm. I would think seven, eight thirty, something like that. Um, I wouldn't expect it to go super long. Um, I uh, wanted to check in with you guys first, and then I'll put it on for push point. So, um, okay. but that, yeah, I, so it's open to everybody. Oh yeah. To show up. Great. The more the better. This is one of those kind of planning committees. It's not the kind where you want twelve. Yeah. People. <laughs> you want like a hundred. Um, obviously, we're not going to get hundred. But but <coughs> the, the more the better in terms of because um, everybody does a little bit mm -hmm. um, to, to make it happen. It's, it's Any other questions? Any other questions? One of the one of the things that we'll be looking for is um, that, like I said, big group, small group. All of the small group need facilitators. So those of you who have facilitation skills, um, uh, and those of you who know people with facilitation skills, or maybe even teachers would be willing to help. Um, we'll do a facilitation training. Um, uh, maybe we can involve some teenagers in this as well. So or people who have never done facilitation but you think they might be good. We'll, be, we'll need to get ten facilitators and ten quarters um, trained. So anybody comes to mind for that. Okay. Thank you. Um, facilitators at U32? I mean, I think Bill refers to student facilitators on a regular basis. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely students and teachers over the years who've been trained facilitators. Mm -hmm. I so, suspect the student council might be a good comparison. Uh, student council? Maybe not. Kind of okay. Way out. Way out. <laughs> but yeah. there would be people on, on student council who would be quite interested in. Yeah. No, I, I, I can imagine a lot of ways in which to pull teenagers in. Yeah, yeah, yes, I can too. That would be great. So facilitate yourself for September. For September, yes. Okay. okay, so it sounds like if we have any ideas to share with the planning committee, we can send it to Chris and Woden. Or Chris, yeah. you're definitely going, yeah, and you're a maybe. Okay, okay. Maybe. Yeah. perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great, thanks, yeah. you guys. Thank you for coming in. You bet. Now you can go dark. Yeah. Or is it too dark now? <laughs> or you can stay for the rest the, of our meeting. Yeah, I'm yeah, 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 positive about this. If we want to add things or questions, we talk to Wooden or Chris about it. Thanks. For the their planning meeting. Okay, so next next up is our public communications protocol. And I just want to say, if you don't mind, Chris, in terms no. of the timekeeping, what I did was I allocated 10 minutes for the next um, items. And if one um, needs to go over 10 minutes, then we may need to I did, board goals 10 minutes. I thought we could either introduce it 
or we could move it. But if any of the ones go over 10 minutes, then we won't be um, meeting our 8.30 okay. end time target. So. Thank you. So, Caroline, you want to address this? The communication protocol. Yeah. So it looks like this is on page eight. It's actually not the one that you and I drafted. No, this is what I had, but she asked me to send it, so I did. Yes, she had asked me for hours too, and my computer broke, so I can't physically access it. I do want to pull that up because that's that one is really about. Um, it's it's really important, and my lack of getting it here is not a lack of caring about it. Um, it really talks about um, norms for communications at board meetings. This on, on page eight is really about a response when somebody sends out. Um, so I, I like the idea of this. I had some edits, but I like the idea of notifying people about when they communicate. Did you draft it? Uh, yeah. It was just um, more like, I mean, if people have been writing me about things like, oh, what time is this or that? Well, I'm not going to yep. bother. But if they, I thought if people had things of substance that they were trying to address, this might be a mm -hmm. way to help them understand how it works. I, I like it. I didn't know where it had come from. Um, my suggested edits was um, in the first paragraph, the word rules. I would say protocol or procedure. That's just a... Mm -hmm. And then... Um, I once attended a, uh, there was a training for the board. It was a school board training. They used to provide them when, um, and they may still, I have no idea. But what my memory tells me is that when it's an individual board member and you're not at a board meeting and you're not designated by the board, you're, you're really not a board member. Um, so verbal conversations with one board member are private. One, we can, t we can definitely fact check that because that training was probably 10 years ago. But if that is actually the case, maybe some type of a statement um, would help, like an additional sentence about, um, uh, I, I guess I don't have one ready, but something that would capture that you're not, when you're communicating with an individual board member, it's very different than having communication with the board. Do you, Matt and um, Worcester, deal with that at all? Have, do you have anything that you've shared with your communi community about the difference of, you know, chatting with you? Like, say, say somebody chats with you, oh, they don't like the time of the practice schedule or whatever, or, or oh, PE time got cut, what's this? It's like chatting with you who happen to have kids there and share in the same, but it's different than um, the following a procedure and coming to the board and bringing an issue with the board. Do you have anything that you do? I can't say that we really sort of codified or written down something that we've shared with the public on that. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say the protocol we follow informally, generally, is how you describe it. Um, that it's people just coming up and talking to us, that's one thing, but they're saying like, I want to get the board's opinion or action on something, then it becomes public correspondence that would be related to the board at a meeting or something like that. Mm -hmm. Anybody good at wordsmithing? No way to capture that. So what are we that? trying to get at? Yeah. I mean, I think what you're Just the idea that, like, if it's individual, it's not, you're not talking to them as a board member. You're either talking to them as an individual or you're talking to them, you're communicating to the board. To be fair, we well, don't actually but have. Not communicating to the board. As an individual. I, I wouldn't quite. But, but we don't have a way to say board. <laughs> we don't have like a board, at, you know, or whatever, Rummy board at Gmail or whatever it is, board at rummy.org. We don't have we that. Have, we do have an S. It says conversation. So this is specifically this is talking good. about verbal conversations. Oh, okay, okay. All right. With yes. one board then member are private. I think what you're trying to get at there is if you if someone comes Matt comes and talks to me about his you know I'm concerned about X Y and Z that I'm not then going to necessarily go and announce to the board Matt has concerns about X Y and Z right like that's the I think, piece because I feel like is that what you're saying I thought you were saying something different <laughs> are you trying to navigate the open meetings law issue here that no. conversation that someone comes no I think she's saying us. that one person doesn't represent the board like if right. if Matt comes and talks to me about 
his child and his child's teacher, he's not actually talking to the board. He's talking to me as an individual. And if he wants to talk to the board, he has to follow the proper protocol to come to the board meeting and tell the board. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Where does, where does D10 and D11 fall into this? What's that? So That's well, actually, the communication protocol. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the I can't remember if it's D10 or D11, but it's right in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The thing that's not in the protocol about if someone's coming, talking about a problem they're having, would think they're having with a teacher or to redirect. Say, yes. Have you got, I mean, that's that's in the draft problem. that I have. Yeah. Okay. Very here. clearly. Yep. So we actually shouldn't. I don't, I don't know if we want to have two different policies that are supposed to incorporate this into the other. Yeah. Or maybe Were you wanting other, just a response to send like to people response, that we all agreed but, to? Right. Just yeah. so that people would know, because, um, like, I just remember last year when, uh, I don't know, somebody, um, Katie, wrote to board members about her concerns about gun law. And then, like, a couple days later, Carolyn got back to her and said, thank you for contacting the board. It was like this really generic reply. And I didn't understand. I was like, what the heck is that? Until I realized one thing. I was like, oh. Right. She we can't, like, discuss that that's this. Descripted. Yeah. And so, but I had, since since I didn't know that, we had talked about, I don't know, back in some meeting, we talked about having some sort of response so that people understood that, like, you can't, like, I can't really talk to you about this. But maybe this just doesn't capture that. I think it's totally captured. Maybe what we could do, I, I would actually, what if we just deleted that whole second paragraph and not go into the two board members piece, just if you've written to more than two board members, we can't reply. And because then the one or two, let's, let's hold that paragraph for when we bring the other protocol, because there's a piece in mm. there that talks to, um, you know, concerns and, and ways to communicate it. And if somebody's communicating with two board members and they don't want to be part of the board, then we don't really need it part of this. But what know. we do need is that it's discoverable as part of the yes. public record. Yep. That's the piece that's right. important. So yeah, that. you're right. So that second sentence. That was just to let people know that, yes, it's not, this is potentially not a private conversation you're having if you're emailing multiple board yep. members. Or even one. Right. Yeah, I think even one, I think. I think. Yeah. So, yes, maybe we move that second sentence to the third paragraph and just say, um, uh, have that to be the first sentence. Um, all emails are discoverable. All emails to, on any board email is discoverable as part of the public record. Yeah. And then if you have written more than two board members, sort of roll into that. Say it slightly differently than I just did, but... <laughs> And it's not just on the board email because, for example, I don't get the forwarding doesn't work, so I use my Gmail for board business. Okay. So all emails written to board members in their official capacity. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Written as a board member, you received it as a board. Yep. Because you're, no, you're are discoverable yeah. as part of the public record. But this is <coughs> great. great. Thank you. This has been interesting. All board members, sorry, just say it again. All, e in their official all emails to board members in their official capacity are discoverable. Like letters and text count too, so right. anything that's written, 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 written communications. written to board member in their official capacity is, is becomes part of the public record and is discoverable. What is that? D10. D10. Your policy. Okay. Yeah. That was, yeah. I'm glad you had and the public record. And there is a procedure a in the idea. handbook as well. Mm -hmm. For the communication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the one we're trying to revise, no. right? So. No. It's different. Okay. It's different. We don't. Maybe we just don't need this at all. I just like no. I think we do. I, we we had said that we wanted something, and I think it makes sense. Okay. And maybe you're the thing that you drafted. When we look at it, maybe we talk about putting it on the website. Yeah. That would, everywhere. Okay. Okay. So um, you want to circulate another edition? I will. I could. I can just email it to you. I guess because I can't really email it to everybody, right? Okay. I think you can, but then nobody can nobody respond. Can respond. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're learning. Okay. Uh, next up is the principal presentation policy on page nine. We um, have this up for discussion before. Um, and um, now the time is to adopt it or not adopt it. Um, so is there any uh, well, most? We can't adopt it because it's not an action agenda item. It's a discussion. It's a discussion agenda item. 
So the only thing we can do is talk about it. Uh, we're going to move that we talk about it at a time that we, when we're going to take action on it. Um, and so I'd uh, move that we put it to Table our next it. board meeting. Can I have a quick question about it, or do you want to sure. wait? No, well, I think we're going to talk about it then. Then we'll, we'll wait? Bring it up the next okay. meeting. Thanks. I think perhaps um, it would be good to have a draft that does not have the notes on it. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Okay, so the survey, I, um, the disclaimer is this is a draft. I was asked to draft um, a survey, so everything in it is at this time, my personal opinion. Um, <laughs> it definitely needs to be edited for all of this. Um, um, the only person that sent me questions was the community member. Um, Ursula Stanley had sent some. I did, what I would like to do is to discuss this survey. Do you need one? Did you have one question? And, and Brian, I'm sorry. I wasn't there yet. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, Brian gave me questions. Ursula Stanley gave me hers. So what I'd like to do is go through this and then what I wanna do is read Ursula's so that everybody agrees or, or we change it that hers was incorporated in what I did. Let me just say something first that may impact this conversation. So I communicated to our, the facilitators that we really appreciated their work, that we were going to potentially do a survey, and I said that one question had come up sort of repeatedly in this conversation was, you know, would we be able to sort of draw a circle around the topics that were going to be able to be discussed? And they said n no, um, that they had talked, they had sort of, that would have been their conclusion, and they'd even talked with Lisa Bedinger about that. So I just wanted to put that out there before we have, you know, kind of wordsmith. Yep. Uh, because I, I suspect that that will probably change your mind um, about the about having one? a healing event. Yeah. Um, not, uh, we'll see. <laughs> um, they, and one last thing, they also offered to work individually with members of two at a time. And they were okay still, even though we, we messed up their time frame? Um, they were clearly disappointed. Um, I think... Uh, they're open to working with us. Um, you know, I think that they, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so what I'd like to do is give three minutes for people to read through it and then give me a chance to just sort of explain if that's okay. But that way everybody can read it. <clears throat> okay, um, so it's a lot in the beginning. I, I kind of wanted to shorten it because I want to get a lot of responses, but at the same time, um, people have come saying that, you know, they get things and they don't even, you know, know where it's coming from. So I wanted to sort of capture why we were doing the survey. Um, and then really just get to, you know, are people interested in coming? Would they come? Um, there is a type number three. That's not how I meant to phrase that. that um, I had changed it in my edits, but didn't change it on this draft. Um, uh, just sort of wanting to say, like, it's the, it's the school budget um, that we would spend. And then I put the up to, up to 1,000, 3,000, 5,000. Um, And I feel like there was more that I <laughs> thought I needed to say, but I feel like the questions are there and we can just edit. So um, I'll take the first shot at it. Um, I think the second paragraph needs to be clarified um, because I don't think it was um, ethically that we could not respond ethically or legally. I think there are some questions we couldn't respond to legally, but not all of them. Um, and. You know, ethically, there were probably things we should have responded to, but we couldn't come to agreement to respond to them. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure that this value to respond caused a rift in our school, school community. I think the, the positioning kind of indicates that value to respond caused a rift, um, and I don't think that that is um, accurate. Um, wait, wait, so sorry. You don't think that our failure to respond it that led That led to, I think it is, Maybe part of it, is in part of it, but not the 
reason that there's a rift. I mean, this seems like we didn't respond, so there's a rift. Um, I don't think that's accurate, actually. Um, I think there was a rift that the questions posed reflected and that we did not respond to those questions. So I think the rift pre-existed our failure to respond. That's, what, that's all I'm saying, because I think the way it's written here, yeah, failure to respond uh, created yeah. a rift. Um, and I guess what I meant was there is still one because we never responded and like... And I would agree with that, but so not the... finding a way to say not that. Not that cause and effect. Mm -hmm. um, about even just, I'm sorry. The other thing, just I like the questions, um, but I would like to get away from healing event because it almost sounds like a revival meeting that we scare people <laughs> off. Um, and I would rather substitute community form to address, you know, healing issues or something like that. But a healing event almost come to the river and we'll take care of things. <laughs> Just, but uh, otherwise, I like the way these other questions are phrased because I think they're very direct and just give us a response. The healing, I think that's sort of what we've been intentional and intentionally sort of using over the last couple months. Um, so I, but I, I, yeah, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that we should be promising healing, uh, but I understand why we're called, we're called that. One thing that it doesn't get to is a question about if um, the current situation, the, whether it's the lack of communication around it, if, if it is having a negative impact on student learning. Um, none of these questions really ask that, and that is something um, that I would really want to know is is this something that's necessary to improve student learning in our school? Do you think that's a question that can be answered through this survey? I think it's a question that could be asked mm -hmm. of, and you know, it would be for the school community would fill it out. So teachers, um, all you know, all staff mm -hmm. members, and then would we want then uh, would we want to? Um, know where the answers were coming from so that because that might that would be useful information if some population thought that yes and if it was the teacher saying yeah we think it would helpful mm -hmm. be helpful and other community members wouldn't mm -hmm. either would know or not uh, whether it would just to because if it's all lumped in to gather you may not be getting some important feedback from a, a part of the community that's in the school regularly Would teachers be willing to participate if they had to identify it in some way? We could, we could just say they, 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 could, they could anonymously respond by putting it in a box. You don't need a name attached to it. No, no but, but just even identifying as an, a like by handwriting or something like that. I don't know. That's a concern that I would have, I think. Mm -hmm. But it would, on the other hand, if it's all in one um, bucket, then you say, you have, oh, you have, you know, ten people saying that it would it has harmed student learning, uh, and that's not a great number maybe in the community, but if it's nine out of ten teachers, that's a you know that's a significant number. So, knowing where the source of that that particular question, because I don't think community members at large would know that one way or another. They could talk about their own child. Do you think this um, has uh, impacted your own child's um, mm -hmm. learning? Then that's a different question, uh, because they, uh, you know, parents are certainly able to, to give that opinion. Um. Well, what we know is that community involvement is key to <coughs> one of the big keys to student learning, right? That's I'm on that tonight from Amy. Didn't you say that in your presentation? <laughs> <laughs> uh, parents engaged on supporting student learning is actually the thing. That's what the so national PTO right. yeah. advocates for. So we have conditions at home for student learning to support it. Um, so Ursula's question, well, so did it address your question? Yours was about the cost. Yeah, I just wanted did to. Did this yep. 
Um, uh, so Ursula's was specifically about, uh, so I did, oh, this was what I wanted to say. Um, I was sort of envisioning using um, SurveyMonkey, mm -hmm. and you can choose the types of questions, and I thought um, some would either be yes or no, multiple choice. I wanted, I thought we should stay away from open-ended because we don't really have the resources to then mm -hmm. organize all of those. So <coughs> Ursula, Ursula's question was somewhat open-ended as to um, has your school involvement decreased and why? I would like, I think for this one, kind of just asking if, if this issue and the lack of communication around this issue has led to a decline in school enrollment, uh, sorry, school um, engagement, school involvement, um, and they can just say yes or no. And I felt from our last meeting that we may want to look at a board goal around what we want for school community engagement and, and ways that we can support our principal. We um, There were everybody mentioned all the things that Amy has brought this year um, inviting parents in and the curriculum nights and all these things that um, I feel like maybe that should be a separate survey so having the question on here to answer yes or no and then if we need to dig deeper into that issue um, we do it separately okay, that sounds good. Um, so Ursula's question is number nine essentially that's so that's my thought so if I find it and pull up her exact question I would just want to make sure that everybody agrees um, her question 1a do you feel your involvement in the school community as a volunteer has decreased in the past year if yes what factors contributed to this decline um, and then her other one was what would stop you from attending a community forum or healing event that was included earlier on perfect um, do we want? Uh, I actually think it might be good to specify as, as a as has your participation as a volunteer decreased because that can be a yes or no question. What did you say? I thought that was. It's not. I don't think it says it as a volunteer. It's specifically as a volunteer. Oh, instead of school involvement. Yeah, because that can be because volunteer is very specific. I, I will say, like from my perspective, you know, we've had something <coughs> event-wise about every month. Yes. of this school year and it's not that we're not having people come to the events right. it's the setup for the events that you know and it's hard to know how much of that is you know sports schedules and multiple kids and yeah, I mean, I, all of those family factors but people are still coming um, to donuts with dad and you know, muffins with mom and mm -hmm. movie nights and all that jazz so um yeah, I, I, I just I, I want to like just point out people are still coming into the school mm -hmm. um, for those sorts of things. The, the direct correlation between um, what you know what happened last year or prior to that um, may have an impact, but I but I do question the, the whole correlation, or even if there is a real. Um, I, having been in this school for six years now, um, I've personally witnessed a lot of ebbs and flows in volunteers, and I can't say it's it's ever been super ro uh, robust uh, to begin with. So um, I think that's going to be a tough thing for this survey to try to, mm -hmm. to capture. Um, I totally agree. And I worded it the way I did because I really only want to be asking the question if there's some piece of that that fits with what our survey was intended, which was to gauge um, about the community mediation. Mm -hmm. I really um, like the way that there's actually an introduction. and It is lengthy, but I think that's good. <laughs> And because we, as community members, most people actually still really don't have any clue as to what happened, largely because there was never any sort of explanation. And so, you know, what you said is could not ethically or legally answer the questions posed to us. Something that occurred to me is, 
It became clear that we as a board could not communicate with the community in part because of ethical and legal reasons and in part because of board disagreement on the nature of response. That lack of response exacerbated the rift in the community that it formed. Because you guys never responded, and so then like people didn't know. And I think it'd be really nice to say that. Like we we couldn't agree on what to say, and that's I think that would explain it for a lot of people as to why nothing was said. And that's an okay reason. Like, you yeah. can't agree. Yeah. It's a fine yeah. reason. Yeah. It's true. It's it just fine. yeah. It just would help understand, and, and so I think that would be a really nice thing Can to I lead in. Sure. Mm -hmm. Are you agreed on what to say now? <laughs> no. No. no, not in answer to those questions. No. So. I mean, one question that I have looking at this, and, and you know, I'm keenly aware that I'm not directly a member of this community, so please, in that context. Um, but uh, it, I, I guess if, if the event is tip for healing, um, and and you are leading the event, and you are not healed, um, then it's unlikely to produce that outcome. In fact, it seems more likely to perpetuate the rift as it's called here. That's one observation I just wanted to make. And then the second thing is that, um, like you, Chris, I gotta go to biblical sort of thinking when I look at this. Like, it reads to me like a sackcloth and ashes kind of approach, which is, it's a grieving and atonement event. Um, you know, and the rift and negatively affected and decline and involvement and, you know, it's a very, it's a very heavy, heavy document um, that, that's very focused on revisiting the past rather than starting fresh for the future. So I just offer that observation for your thinking, I guess. Thank you. Well, I'm going to say that I actually left our last meeting um, in a very different place than I came in, and I'm not sure that it really makes sense for us to do this. Um, <laughs> we keep all changing. To no, do this no, no, to do, no, to do the, even an event. Um, partly because I don't think we are going to agree on the point of it. Um, and, you know, I, I just don't see that happening. Um, and that's partly why I introduced this. And so um, if we can't, then I think um, it's probably the best thing is to just not try and do it and to focus on the work that we can do. Well, I think that uh, I appreciate you raising that because uh, I think that uh, Amy gave a lot of examples of where $2,800 could be. Really well better, spent. Better spent potentially, uh, and so I mean, that that um, that's kind of where I'm where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We need sixty eight hundred bucks. So could we agree to use these? tweet three paragraphs and then a little we've decided not to move forward that's our communication I love that and maybe the last thing could be one question which would be what would increase your involvement and investment in Romney School oh that's a good idea so still do a survey but for a single question mm -hmm. or you know it, it, you know if you care to share here's a statement and here's you know we'd really like to hear so that so, it's positively framed um, <coughs> so you looking, what? I had a. I you just heard about this vision for the future event that's coming up. Yeah. It could be the board support for ongoing visioning and your investment behind that process for the entire town, in a forward-looking way, right? Just we're not going to move like move. We're not going to have the forum. The entire town is going to have the opportunity to explore education and nine other areas. Together, we hope that you will come. I can do that. But I still think we should. We need to respond to our community and say yeah. we're not going to respond. I think um, that's so the three paragraphs, right. right? Oh, using this. Using this as a template. Okay, and, and then and adding, adding on the, the other part. Adding okay. That. I admit that um, Woden and I have talked some about these things because we have very disparate opinions sometimes. Mm -hmm. And something that Woden has continually brought up to me. I think I can say this, is that um, some people she's talked to, and I, I think even sometimes you have felt this, like, almost like this Romney is not the same as it used to be. Like, there's this, almost like this this death of a creature. Like, there was this social being in this community that doesn't happen anymore. And so I just want to make sure that, like, if that were to happen, maybe if you could just reflect on it a little bit and see how that part of you reacts to it, if that part of you is reflected 
It sounds like there's other people who feel the same way, but yeah, no, I think and there and reflect on that. Yeah. And there are people who say, Romney's not how it used to be. You know, right. there, that is how I personally feel, and I have heard that from others as well. Is this? It, it's it, again that gets to the very diverse opinions, and I think that's okay. But if we're if if we're going to point out one, we really need to. Well, but in this case, it isn't how it used to be. So some people are sort of feeling a loss, mm -hmm. right? So if we. And other people are actually sort of getting what they, I mean, not, not getting what they hopeful, want, but, but yeah. having this thing yeah. that's working really well for them. So maybe addressing somebody that doesn't have something, but actually everybody else is getting what they need. Mm -hmm. That might feel like a reasonable compromise. But I, I like the idea of this first response, and I like the idea of just yeah, what what you know, what would you guys need to get into our school? Or, I guess volunteer is the crucial word. Was that what I was hearing from Amy? Was it? It's not just people coming. It's actually yeah, people, people have been set up and yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, and then yeah. Oh, I think that's fine. So there's, you know, last uh, meeting uh, discussion about trying to revive this climate committee, whatever you want to call it, and maybe a school. Environment can you rename it, but is there any interest in trying to do that? I would. I mean, that would be a, you know, that's kind of an ongoing process. Would it be at all helpful to you, um, for the board to initiate a school climate committee or to put support behind? that committee again? I think that we're handling a lot of those areas in other ways. Mm -hmm. And, but I will do what the board wishes. Because it can't, it was difficult because some questions came up at the last meeting and um, without the administrators there. And one of the things I had thought was, I made an assumption that you went with what was higher priority and seeing your presentation tonight, I have that same feeling, but um, I don't. Is I don't accurate? think the school's <laughs> climate rests with a small group of people, and I think any time you try to just fix it with five people and, and charge them with dispersing it or what have you, it ends up pretty irregular um, in the understanding. So. What we're trying to do is instead have collective ownership as a faculty around that and get the focus on learning, which I think improves any school climate. Yeah, let people be excited when their children come home and they learn new things every day, huh? Like mm -hmm. you were so sparkly mm -hmm. when you said that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of that's still evolving, mm -hmm. you know, and it's evolving through Cocoa Talks where kids are surfacing ideas and those are being acted on. You know, it's not finished business, but, you know, I think the way that you actually address some of the underlying issues is by getting the organizational structures in place to support the various areas. It's having a, a robust, supportive EST system that's, you know, doing proactive things. I mean, when I was describing to our school or district uh, psychologist, what we're planning on doing with the 0.5 MTSS, she was elated because she saw the potential of having a person really deployed to help some kids just navigate how to do school and to con converse with teachers on strategies that would help those students um, succeed better. So, I, I mean, I'm not trying to minimize or um, bump anybody out of the process, but there's there's a lot of work to do, and you know I would like for us to be focused on on those things and celebrating those things that a school is best at. So, um, but that's my two cents. I mean, I would love to see efforts put into developing a robust uh, PTNO see that revitalized. Um, PTM. Oh, what's the PTM. That's PTM. being PTM. a little bit more inclusive than just a PTO. Yeah. So Do what's the end? What does it stand for? Neighbor. What's neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Thank you. I had totally heard that before. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I think what the original climate committee was trying to get at was not just the school climate. You know, I think there's sort of these interlocking circles of the school climate and then the sort of parental, you know, climate and then the, the community climate. And it sounds like school climate, you know, things are, are working well. And so maybe these sort of bigger circles are the kind of thing that comes up at the vision of action community. Mm -hmm. um, but I do Or think maybe it's incorporated into the PTO. Or maybe it's incorporated into the PTO. Maybe you bring it in the N right. for a neighbor. Yeah. Um, or volunteer. I mean, I just, I don't, you know, I don't feel like you can, at least uh, with what was inherited this year, you know, I think focusing on that inner circle was, was the right thing. And I think the things that we co-designed as a faculty were at least our first best iteration, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of, there is a lot of potential. This is a great place. And I love the people that work here, and I love the kids that are here. And, you know, I just, I'm really excited to see, like, to bring results of, like, what, what the potential is in this place for not just, like, core academics, but creativity and expression and student leadership and community, like, a learning center here where, you know, people can have classes. And, I mean, all that's, but I can't do that all in the first year. <laughs> yeah. So, so my recommendation would be that we add something when we do our board goals. We have a goal around community engagement. We state what we want, and that then gives the administrator in the school time to develop a plan, bring us data on it, and then we can see if we're needed anywhere for additional support to meet the goal. That sounds good. Reasonable. Well, there should be, like, there's ways that I'm sure you guys can en engage the community, too, you know? I mean, Allison I had a lot of I ideas. Think, I think teachers, you know, they do stuff on a regular basis mm -hmm. to engage the parent community. And, you know, I'm looking at ways to, like, revamp uh, some of the ways that we're communicating more broadly, um, all within, you know, tightening uh, privacy regulations out there in the world, you know, and more awareness around those things. Okay. Um, any more? Uh, okay. So we're so going to we revise. So gonna what if revise? Um, Woden and I email back and forth, starting okay. with these three, adding this, what okay, we think so, of the spirit of this, yeah. and then we'll. I had some ideas. Down so with I'll somebody. do the same. So maybe I'll I email you a little comment or a, whatever, a few cop comments, and yes. Okay, great. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay, next up. I think actually, can we agree to let like let somebody send? Are we talking about taking this and adding a little statement that says that we're kind of wrapped this up? Mm -hmm. We've gotten as far as we can get. Yeah. So basically, having all this right here, and then. But tweaking this part that we didn't agree on okay. so that it's more inclusive of, inclusive of everybody or everybody's thoughts on it and then um, summarize that we're done and then send it out. Although with the question of what can you, what can we do to get, you know, what, what would it take for you to be, to volunteer at the school? How are we, is this going to be, I'm sorry, is this going to be the survey or is this going to be just a communication that we're then inviting people to respond to the board? to by email or other type of correspondence. Um, I thought it was being connected with the community vision um, work. Are we all interested in that, connecting with the community yes. vision work? Or, okay. I mean, so, so Bernie makes a fair point about whether this should go out well before, because I imagine that's not going to go out until late summer, early September in terms of getting people in Although so finally. Susan's going to be posting on Front Porch Forum we're having our first meeting, right. so we can then piggyback. On, there will be a reference point. Okay. So how soon do we want this response to, or this statement to go out? I think our next meeting, if we can do it, right? Okay. Great. And then just so we're clear, so is it a, is it maybe a statement on Front Porch Forum, which, and then people can email the, the author and, you know, either one of us can collect those responses, or... Do we want us to do it as a Google as a survey? Like it seems, that survey is not the right format at this mm -hmm. point. 
would we like that last question? I think it would be really useful. Um, Is a survey question or just a response question? I think, you know, the, the board invites your thoughts on, you know, asks you to please let us know what would increase your involvement in volunteerism. And so we're looking for a written response. Yeah, I mean, because I think having a written response on that question would be helpful to gauge what folks are thinking rather than just, yes, I'd like to be more involved. Don't, don't really know what that means. What would we do with the responses once we got them? It would give us information on if community members are interested in being more involved, how they are, and to try and work into how to reach out to bring those folks in. Amy? Oh, no. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, as opposed to just saying, yes, I would, that doesn't give you, it just gives you a yes, it doesn't give you a what or how. It might confuse them of how it ties in with what we're writing. Like now that we're not doing a survey, we're not moving forward. So what if we did our communication, set our board goals, and maybe once our goals, we may have more questions than just the volunteering piece mm -hmm. that we would want to ask. Mm -hmm. yeah, fair enough. So and then it could be more like, you know, way. survey monkey might make more sense. Because so, we may want input on designing our goals. I don't know, but... But what about bridge language from these three paragraphs? Um, and I think just leaving it, just saying we're not going to respond, would leave a bad taste in some folks' mouths, as opposed to we're not going to respond for these reasons, but we're, we are interested in moving forward, and how would you like to be involved in, and then giving an option of, Opening or that we up. The dates of when we'll be discussing our board goals, Ooh, and we yeah. encourage them we to come do, to those meetings. That would be great too. And email us if they have input prior. That would be good too. Okay. Can we? But just not leaving it flat. Yeah. I mean, or uh, offering an opportunity for continuation. I think that's a great idea. So. Yeah. Okay. And are we supposed to talk about, so there's no way we're talking about board goal tonight. We'll just put it off for yet. <laughs> not now when Caroline has. So are you, where did you guys leave it that you're going to survey the whole community? No, 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 no we're not going to do that. Board goals? No, no we're not going to do that. The board but goal piece. We're not doing a survey right now. <laughs> we're sending out communication. No, I got that, that wraps part. Up but then to address the board goals, are you getting feedback on that? Paragraph saying we welcome your involvement. You know, please come to the meetings where we talk about board goals. Please email us. Please talk to us. You know, we're um, kind of a generalized paragraph. And then as we get to the board goal meeting, we, we can send out another um, deciding that we need more input and we may design a survey at that time. I would encourage a, a more even um, surveying uh, because just some people just can't we're get away. Even. Um, you mean I think showing up? A lot of people. I think that there would be a segment of people that might be more likely to fill out a survey than to email directly oh. mm -hmm. with their name mm -hmm. attached mm -hmm. or to come to a meeting. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm yeah. Yeah. Well, you want to just write, provide that as an option? I mean, or is it we're making the document to do too much work? Oh, not with this document. I'm saying when you get to the board goals, yeah. right. I do, what I don't want is uneven representation. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. where it's like one voice in the room that could come mm -hmm. yeah. that's making the decision. Yeah. Okay. Or well, giving I don't inside. think that would. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> we respect that community member so much. I, 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 oh, I think that's been, that, that, that's been the nature of how our meetings have operated in the past. I mean, I, you know, I, I, that just is so little for us that uh, I, I don't but, think I mean, I'm going no, there. Seriously, it's I mean, we have. It's, I mean, that's by the nature of having a few people show up and trying to, you know, invite their engagement, I think, in with the best intentions, sometimes the dynamic of the meeting changes from a meeting of the board with the public uh, invited to attend and provide comment, and rather a meeting of the board and the public together. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have, we go off on an issue area that really distracts us from the work mm -hmm. that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Or a strong opinion voiced. I know for yeah. me, um, somebody making a statement about it, it shouldn't matter the cost, decide if you do it. 
that was sort of what I went with throughout the meeting. And then as I stepped back, I thought, I don't know if every taxpayer would agree. And I don't know if giving more time to process, if that is my philosophy, but in that moment, feeling the pressure, that's exactly what my takeaway was throughout the meeting. So I think Brian's right on. Mm -hmm. And this so, is one of my poor goals, <laughs> figuring out a good mechanism for communication. Yeah. So. So um, are we waiting on, so is this communication let's being, let's bring that we're going to draft when, when, it, we're going to bring it to the next meeting, and we're going to be on wait, every wait. single word, and hopefully by proxy. <laughs> so so when are we going to draft our board goals at what meeting? Next meeting. Let's okay, see. then we can, we, we cannot solicit support after. If we want to invite right, people to our work. board goals okay. meeting, so, we have to get this out minute, beforehand. Wait. Our next meeting is to discuss board goals. Part of that discussion may not be setting the goals. It may be having us pair off, going out into the community. Like it, it may be creating a way to design them. Okay, but when, you know, when? ideally, when would we want to set our board goals? By what month? Because we don't usually meet in May. July. Yeah. Well, if it's May, then we're already behind the eight right, ball. So and June. if it's June, then we need to solicit support from the community or input from the community before that. Um, because we don't meet in July generally. We yeah. could, but don't generally. And then August, we're into the next year when the, we should be implementing I would, the goals. I would personally want um, the end of August. I am really excited about the SU retreat or mm -hmm. the potential. Mm -hmm. I think I replied to the survey already. And that might tweak our goals, because then we have some that are aligned with other schools. I don't know. I I want to start the discussion, and I want it to become a main focus of our meetings, but I don't want to rush and have it published by June. Yeah, I, I can't. I mean, it, for us to we think that we would come up with goals in a single meeting, I think is unrealistic. Well, then, so then we uh, invite the public or community in when? Uh, well, they're invite, I, I would invite them to all of them and let them know when we are discussing the goals. But I think that the first meeting we have where that's the main topic, um, community involvement in the goals, I think will be a big part of it. I think that we could leave this open-ended. You don't have to put the dates of when things are happening, but we're going to be discussing goals in the future when we really want you guys to come. And, and I would feel really comfortable saying that if Carolyn and Woden agree on a statement, I would stand behind what they say, and they could release it to the public sooner than after we agree on it all next month. I have full confidence that every word is carefully considered, and I feel like we already have a good start. I've been burned and, on the and public see, I would, I would say <laughs> that the board as a whole should just really give, the, give, the, yeah. give the okay, because it's going to be a board document. Okay, so all right. So could, is, would it be a possible thing within the scheme of our board for... Carolyn to send a final draft out and if everybody agreed on it they could reply to her if somebody disagrees we put it on the agenda for next month or just have a very brief meeting for that purpose alone the meeting yeah for that purpose <laughs> alone <don't> <laughs> we've not had one meeting that has if know, that's the only thing it. on the agenda I don't buy it it won't be. Then it would just there'll be a resignation. There'll be a hire. There'll be something. There always has been. We've never had a meeting less than an hour, even when we said one item. Well, if we just need an update on this financial thing. It's five up, we minutes. Have to meet for that anyway. So. I guess I just look at you know the amount of time we've been just doing cleanup since this you know for set of elections, right? And I, it does seem to me that we need to really take some time and get super clear that we've done what we need to do before the summer. And so I would put in for an extra meeting. I know you you don't necessarily love that, but just to make sure that we have got, we're setting ourselves up for the summer in a really solid way. Because we only have one more meeting before the summer, before August at this point, right? right? Yeah. Unless we agree to have a July meeting. I. Yeah, I do not support additional meetings. Um, I think to find a time that we could all meet in May is going to be tricky, and it will be even trickier to have our administrators there. And the last meeting proved to me I don't want a meeting without our administrators. So then let's uh, gauge our administrators, see what might work uh, for them in either two in June or another in May um, to address this specific issue in terms of board goals. Um, because I think we're waiting till August. Uh, we're, we're waiting too long. Or one in July. Is one in July not an option? You know what, I think in terms of public participation, I think 
July and August are like vacation months, and I think it'd be harder to get folks in in July and August. Whereas in June, folks haven't left yet if we get it before the end of the year, before the end of the school year. So in terms of we're really interested in, in maximizing participation, and it may end up being Matthew. Um, uh, but if we're interested in, in making, putting it at a time when folks will have more opportunity to attend, I think we have to do it before the end of the school year, before people disperse. And are we imagining the board goal meeting as being kind of a listening session? Section we want to hear what you all have to say, or is it more that we're sort of putting I forth think, ideas? I think we're putting are... forth ideas and and having folks weigh in with other ideas. Mm -hmm. It would be my impression. So because they're board goals. Up and come back with. <coughs> can, can I just make one comment, maybe? Sure. That's, okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I apologize, I couldn't be at the meeting last month. It was the same night as the Doty school play, um, which my son was in. Um, but uh, if you, if the board doesn't know the um, the board goal topics that the SU board selected in, at its meeting in March and more or less charged the executive committee with trying to flesh out and sort of figure out um, the results of which you see in your packet today. Um, and I think that our Certainly my hope and aspiration was that um, we'd be able to agree on at least these three goals um, in common among all the boards in the, in the SU. Um, it seems like there's many advantages to me to doing that. Um, and it also seems like the, board, the goals are both uh, broad enough and universal enough that that could possibly happen. Um, you know, respecting the fact, as Chris has raised a couple of times, that you know each building, each board might have specific issues it wants to address that you know might constitute additional goals if you look at it in that way. Um, so the the process that we're that's happening now is that each district board has these goals in their packet for discussion at their meetings in this month. Uh, the executive committee will meet again on May 30th, um, and we're inviting the non-executive committee participating school board chairs to participate in that meeting as well uh, to get feedback and see if we can sort of hammer out a final version of these. And then at the carousel meeting on June 6th, we'd be asking the boards to actually um, consider adopting these goals. Um, it sounds like you're, I can tell, you know, not, not maybe quite there. Um, but I just wanted to say that out loud so that you had a sense of and I, my, I will say that my sense is um, that the boards generally across the SU are moving in that direction. So just so you have that information. That's, and that's part of the, sorry, go ahead. I, um, in my, my personal preference, I mean, I think if we're going to be, although I didn't support it, if we're going to stay true to our intent of the proposal that we submitted to the state, then I, I see that basically all of our schools, our specific local, board goal should be derived from the mm -hmm. common uh, three goals for the for the SU and all of our goals are fed are essentially aimed at supporting those goals and ideally there's going to be some overlap and maybe there'll be some differences based on you know things that might be going on locally but there's going to be a lot of, of commonality and again it's all going to be leading up funneling up to the three goals that are shared across to supervisory union and I don't Personally, I feel if we, if we can't operate in that type of way, then we made a disingenuous promise uh, to when we submitted our proposal to the state. I second that. And so, and I think the word disingenuous is not a fair one because if you wanted to operate that way, we would have gone for a consolidated union. Um, I think we um, always said that you can be a part of and um, have your own separate goals and identity as well. And so I think Romney probably has some goals that are not contained in the three uh, that are basically generic, not generic in a negative way, but just broad-based, much broader-based, um, and not um, school-specific. So I think we can do both, actually. And to say disingenuous, I think, is just, you know, it's, it's uh, an unfair word. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of a cudgel word saying, if you don't do everything that uh, we, we said in the, um, in, to the state, then you're being disingenuous. Um, the uh, governing model that we submitted 
It was not a uniform one. Otherwise, we'd have one board for five towns. And we did not submit that. No, but we did state that we would continue uh, to work more closely together uh, as boards. And to me, this is you know a very um, sort of low-hanging fruit way of us doing that. And it's, you know, we can have, as I said, we can have our own um, boards that may deviate, that might not be shared amongst every single school, hmm. but the threads, you know, they, all, they, they are threads of the larger goals. I mean, it's, it's I, I can't imagine these are pretty broad in scope um, that we, that, what we see as our goals don't support, or like to think that are, are going to support what the um, common goals are across the SU. But I feel like the intent, my preference would be, I guess, the intent of our goals is that they are not only to support what we want to accomplish here as a school, but they're going to support the sort of the greater good of the SU and the kids that are all going to be feeding into U32. Uh, at some point in time. Um, so I think that you're both right, actually. Um, I kind of think about it in terms of like the Vermont State motto, like freedom and unity. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's you can have both. But, you know, there's there's ways in which we want to be unified and acting together as one system. There's we also want the freedom to be diverse and you know differentiate where that's necessary. Um, and I actually think these three goals and my and I they're it's intentional are designed to spur some conversation about how we strike that balance in three different areas of our operation. One is how the boards operate. One is how we focus on student learning and the data that we're requesting and analyzing about that. And one's about community engagement. Um, so I really feel like this, this conversation that you're having, essentially, which is how are we working together as one system in service to all the kids that we, that we serve um, and in what ways do we do we want to make sure that we're sort of leaving space and freedom to differentiate and innovate and, and do cool things school by school? Um, so I really see that as being a part of this, the way that the goals are structured. I just want to add too that we had this um, very specific context of the events that happened here, and there are lessons to be learned from that. And I think we probably agree on some of those, and maybe don't agree on others. But that that is. Uh, moment where there are a, there's a lot that we can unpack and a lot that we can unearth and that may in fact be useful to other schools you know in the, in the system right like for example we don't have a robust principal evaluation system we learned that you know and so maybe you know maybe that's one of our bro bro goals I think it should be um, and maybe that's then something we get to share out in the policy committee or wherever um, but that that you know that context I think is, is just really important for us to think about and what can we add and what can we contribute coming out of that I think that's so I'm sorry that, that's you've heard twice tonight once from your teachers who coll were collaborating with each other and talking about how awesome that was and collaborating with their their like uh, mm -hmm. colleagues across the, the SU and how great that was um, and then Susan was talking, and I almost laughed out loud because I've been thinking this myself about you know, the parable of the blind people and the elephant. And I feel like going to all the meetings I've been going to the last two or three months that I'm seeing the whole animal really for the first time, um, and getting a sense of what we do have to gain from you know building better connected tissue between the boards and collaborating and doing just what you're describing, which is sort of figuring out what we, what we all have to throw into the pot that's of value. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, a natural extension of kind of all the stuff we've been talking about. Yeah. It seems to me like you, we've talked about all three of the goals mm -hmm. at various times tonight, mm -hmm. and that there's work to be done in all three of those areas. And it's a little overwhelming to start identifying, like, you know, we've had a lot of, kind of batting around of ideas of even how to begin you know, maybe we just start with these buckets and see if we need another bucket, you know, as far as not identify specific strategies under these larger headings that would be something for Romney. Might be good to get teacher feedback too, the same. Around goals. I think that'd be great sense to have someone sort of consciously think about ways to structure that conversation so that we're not just coming up 
with an agenda item board goals, but that someone's kind of figured it out. I don't know if anyone wants to volunteer. She <laughs> <laughs> could volunteer. Somebody, you know, you know, um, volunteering for? I'm sorry. How do you yeah, think about a board goal conversation? You know, sort of if, if there's, instead of just all of us arriving, oh, we're going to talk about board goals today, someone has come in with, mm -hmm. like, here are two or three different ways we could approach this, and then we can make that decision and then do it. But that it's sort of consciously crafted. That's a great idea. We've, we've kind of gotten to the point where I'm having a little trouble processing. Yeah. Okay, so let's, why we ended so, let's so let's, um, um, I'm going to ask uh, Amy if you would get, uh, and I'll write out the bill and ask them to identify dates that they are available. So then at least, and maybe I'll put Jen Miller on the list too. As <laughs> um, just to identify when they might be available to schedule another meeting, uh, board meeting solely for the purpose of, of addressing board goals. Um, and, and then we'll. And I note my. This is my That's right. <laughs> That's right. And I will cite the last meeting we had that was solely to um, approve or not approve the proposal. Should have been 20 minutes. And the July meeting that was solely to do final edits on the communication. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, okay. We're up to what reports? No, no we three five financial ten. management oh, yeah. questionnaire. So I have that for oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that you have to do tonight. It should not take very long. It's um, it's a required survey that Lori Vigo has to answer every year about business practices. And um, Chris, as the board chair, you need to sign it. Okay. And the minutes need to reflect, if you can pass that to Chris, um, the minutes need to reflect that you had the discussion. This is something required every year. Our auditors are going to look for the minutes to see that this topic was on the agenda, and um, the questions are our basic questions around business practices. Lori always passes it with flying colors, as do all of you as board members. Okay. Um, just essentially making sure it's right there. Okay. With it, so that there are no uh, conflicts of interest. Okay, so we're, we're talking about the financial management questionnaire that uh, is sent to the school boards every year. Um, are you aware of any issues that are currently pending? Um, None. That we are not in compliance with here? No, you all okay. may be not be in compliance if you don't sign okay. it within and, two months. Um, is there a motion that we um, agree that we, go ahead. Just one quick question. Have there been any changes in authorized signatures during the fiscal year with that Allison? Would she count um, it because she's a new? I don't, I don't think so. I okay. mean, this is about the budgetary. Okay, so it's not it's about signed board orders. This is not what that's about. This no, is about, about the okay. position. Okay. Okay, great. Um, is there a motion that we agree that we're in compliance? Uh, is that the motion to say that we accept I don't think you even need a motion. You just okay, need then a signature. I'm good. And so I read through it in the yeah, um, discussion. I realize I'm not going to answer this question. What do you mean? Uh, she said that board members all pass it with flying colors, and I do not, did not know all the answers to those <laughs> questions. Oh, 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 oh. I did not know all those. Uh, okay, so we're going to be on your home Thank you. So you much. That's the last discussion Thank you. item. Okay, next up, um, reports. Uh, to the board I administration. Totally Any? You gave us. I gave you this. Thank you. <laughs> Um, it's just fun to balance is running low as we need last month, otherwise there are admin changes. Okay. Um, executive committee, we um, we did talk a lot about these uh, general goals for uh, and asking the boards to consider them and adopt them uh, in addition to any other goals they may choose to pursue during the year. Um, and I support that effort, actually. Um, so we can... Uh, can contemplate them and then uh, address them at our next regularly scheduled board meeting. Okay. Um, I actually watched the executive committee and there was a discussion um, about the board's role in interviewing personnel. So in preparation for our discussion at our no next meeting, I would encourage board members to watch to know what other schools are doing. And I would encourage them too. <laughs> so that we can decide whether we want to adopt that practice or not. Absolutely. The discussion was great. Um, I'm on the policy committee. Are we ready for that? Yeah. Um, we met 
earlier this week, I think, um, the major issue was we've gone through all of the policies that are required by BSBA at this point. How do we approach the rest of the policies we have? Apparently, there's a big binder. I missed the visual demonstration because I wasn't there. But um, and are we are going to go through the start going through the recommended goals from BSBA using their numbering system, um, which isn't to say that we're going to necessarily adopt all of their policies, but that that's the, the way we're sort of organizing our move through this binder. Um, and then just for your information, I think this is helpful. Um, Policies that are under consideration by any given board come uh, sort of come across our desk, so we get to read what Callis is thinking in terms of public participation. Our principal preservation policy was there as well. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, school start time. Uh, Community. Yeah, I actually missed the last meeting. Generally, we were working on uh, the last meeting was about coming up with actual plans for how we might go through changing our school start time. Did you make it to that meeting? Uh, I think it did. Um, and then there's been a delay in the school start time committee giving this sort of assessment of how those things might work, sort of compiling all that data. So there, the, the, the last meeting or the, the next meeting has been delayed. Um, and I, yeah. and we said I thought Bill and Karen were going down to a... Um, That's where he is. Is right that where he's right now? Okay, so down to Massachusetts, I thought, for a, a seminar on school start time issues. So we'll hear a report back on that. Okay. Um, school quality committee? Uh, yeah, it was uh, really actually an exciting meeting, I have to say. Uh, some of the themes that uh, Amy and uh, our teachers raised today were sort of bubbled up throughout that, uh, that discussion as well. And really what, um, prior to the last meeting, um, there was, the school quality committee is trying to figure out how it can serve as a facilitator of um, sort of monitoring student learning outcomes uh, for the SU board and then also to, you know, how does that filter down to the local boards. Um, and so as a um, sort of experiment with what that might look like, we reviewed um, performance metrics on, on math. Uh, from last, from earlier this year, uh, and had some conversations kind of around around that, what the data was telling us and how it made us feel, and we're gonna continue that conversation um, next meeting as well. But uh, it was really exciting to kind of have some 17 and 30,000 foot conversations about you know, what we kind of hope to accomplish. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, action agenda. Um, is there a motion to approve the hire of our of the um, music teacher candidate? I move to approve the hire of our six tenths time music teacher. Is there a second? Second. Oh, six tenths. Did you say? No, six tenths. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Next is uh, uh, is there a motion to approve the hire of our uh, one point zero literacy specialist? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, non contract, uh, non bargaining contracts? I make a motion that we approve the non bargaining contracts. Do so we have a discussion on that? I don't know anything about it. We're yeah, that's what I was going to say. The recommendation is that you approve non bargaining contracts at 3.5% for all ESP, for all non bargaining folks, actually. <laughs> and that's a raise of 3.5%. 3. 3. Yeah, okay. and although you don't follow the ESP contract, um, you typically follow the recommendations, right. and that's consistent with those recommendations. And that's consistent with the other rest of the board. Yeah. So okay. for your, all of your non-bargaining, the recommendation would be 3.5%. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, the uh, accept the resignation. I make a motion to accept the resignation of the one day a week is what, point oh. Uh -huh. Point two, um, nurse. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, now the roof bid. Um, that's on page the page thirty four of your agendas, and the recommendation is to award the bid to Beauregard General Contracting. 
Okay, so I would um, um, we move this a move that we oh, is our motion. I make a motion that we approve the bid at thirty-three thousand five hundred dollars for Beauregard General Contracting. Ah, right there. Yes, okay. for Beauregard General Contracting. Um, and that is the roof for primarily only. I believe so. There may be a, a teensy bit over my office that's also okay. included. Okay. I found out today. <laughs> so before, um, is there discussion? Because I have a, I have a question myself. Did anybody second my motion? I didn't. Okay, so is, is there a second? Okay. Um, any discussion? Yep. I guess I just want to be really careful, um, given our experience, that we're vetting these people um, and making sure that they do good work. I mean, clearly our roof has been an issue. Um, my question is, um, do we have any information back on the bathrooms in terms of, and, and my uh, concern here is, is if there's going to be um, work that needs to be done, whether we need to prioritize what these uh, projects during the summer may, may need to be. Um, my understanding is uh, part of the, the work is being uh, paired to give us an additional savings because we're, we're going with, uh, the, uh, at the same time. Oh, in terms of Beauregard? With the roof. Okay. And that's part of the scheduled maintenance um, timing. Um, I understand about the um, kind of unknown with mm -hmm. the pipe. Um, the scope has been run, um, and we're also addressing an issue with the front door, just so you guys are aware. Okay. The roof was fixed yesterday. The what? The roof was addressed yesterday. They came to... Oh, to, to look at the roof yes. over here. Okay. Um, and the front door? We're getting... Uh, drawings on that. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have a sense as to when we will hear back on the pipe for the, uh, from the bathroom? I'm waiting for other folks to weigh in, like the architect and Bill Ford and Bill Kimball. Okay. Um, do, you, do we have we have other bids that are out? You have a boiler bid, but it has not gone out yet. Okay. Do we have any other bids that are out other than the roofing? Uh, the flooring and the um, foyer. Okay, so the bid. I'm not sure if the bid is, I want to say the bid is possibly out, I'm not sure on that. Okay. Or they are, they may be, no, they're seeking other contractors because the bid came in high. Oh, then, okay, thank you very much. Um, any other questions? Anyway? So did I just understand that the bid for the shingle roof also involves the bathrooms? Is it going to no. solve no. a sewage problem? No. 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 It's a, a, Separate issue. Separate. Yeah. He's just trying to pay the money. Piece. Yeah, no, that makes right, sense. Yeah. So the SU now has a facilities manager. Is this accurate that they hired one maybe last year and the previously they didn't have one? A, so when the initial roof that we had all the problems with, there's now somebody in a position that is hopefully they, the I, Right? Like that's part of what uh, you yeah. do would be to oversee that they don't. You know what? That the initial was part of the construction and it was overseen by the clerk of the work. I mean, we had someone. I, I don't think that person would be overseeing a, a construction like that. That Not happened with this like, roof. Not necessarily on site, but like looking to make sure that um, the things that go in the contract that were protected from what happened to us before. I don't know if that would be that this individual's I'm not role. Sure about that, Caroline. Do you? Do you know, Amy? I'm not, I, I'm I believe sure. that the, from what I'm gathering, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, yeah. that it seems like this roof issue emerged out of a multitude of cost-cutting kind of uh, yeah, decision Yeah, it sounds that there was some and I don't feel horse like trading that went on. the same category because okay. it's like we're bidding out on the roof and it's not <laughs> part of like we've got to be under this threshold. Right. Am I thinking about that I, wrong? I think what, what I think the way Bill explained it was that when there came a point where trying to do more with the same amount of money, the um, roof they, may, they they went with a uh, subcontractor who was less expensive and is now out of business. Mm -hmm. um, and so they, you didn't have the um, legal protections if the work didn't work out well. And I think that that's what happened here. Um, so it, and that it just, wouldn't happen with this. 
Well, it's just it's a, it's a simpler issue. It's, it's replacing shingles. Um, and so, so I'm not worried about this. I'm just worried about if this bathroom issue becomes a pricey question that, you know, we're, we're not caught short. That's, and I guess that's, that's my the concern. piece that I thought Matt would do is sort of prioritize and keep an eye on. Yes, that's what, how the list emerged. Mm -hmm. um, Matt is. Um, but the pipe wasn't on the list. The bathroom wasn't there. So oh, okay. it was not on the oh, list. Oh, okay. And it's kind of an emergent thing. And I just, again, our fund balance is pretty tight. Oh, and if it's it turns not out that it has. It's in the same money level category as, as the roof, just so you know. Okay. But well, good. Um, I just, again, I'd like for somebody more experienced than I am on that to weigh in. So. You know, it's just, just cautioning. That's sure. all I said. So. Um, all in favor of this, uh, accepting the roof bid for $33,500 with Beauregard General Contracting? Aye. 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 So it passes. Uh, any more future agenda I items? I have uh, uh, Caroline's a question about uh, uh, board involvement in, in uh, interviewing process, principal preservation policy, and then the others that are listed here. Chris, there are um, 6.0, the board orders. Oh, the board orders, I'm sorry. Okay. The principal preservation policy gets under action. Yes. Yeah. It will be, and it will be clean. I'll clean it up. Okay, so uh, we have uh, board orders in the amount of $25,542.25. Uh, is there a motion? Can I see them first? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Are we punting board goals as a, as a future item now? Yes. Okay. With the intent of tackling I'm trying to get a separate board. Right before June 30th. With Caroline as a timekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> so she needs a, like some sort of enforcement mechanism. Oh, there was this whole strategy of red, yellow, green, like when you get it. But what happened? What happened? <laughs> yeah. Do you get to like... So that's your timekeeper. You're not fair. You know, the bullwhip. Are these just these are just all our expenditures? So Matt, are you going to every meeting? I'm not, but I'm going to a lot of them more than I actually expected to. You become like a board meeting junkie. No, I won't. Saved occasionally by withdrawal symptoms. I have to say, I, I thought it would be a grind, and I'm actually enjoying it. So, that's it. I don't know what that tells you about me. Way too much, probably. What was your pen? I know. That's charge. I said I wanted to look at that. I know what we're looking at. Right now? Where? So long. The first one's at a Charlotte. What? A Charlotte? Oh my god. That looks a trip. I wish they hired to see me at home. I like going home. Thank you. So is there a motion to approve the board orders in the amount of $25,542.25? No. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, we'll adjourn at uh, 8.57. Exactly. Thank you, Matthew, for coming. Thanks.